What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Behavioral Arts live stream. I am so excited. We've been waiting for this for quite a bit of time. Now, I know quite a few of you saw the analysis video of the little previews on the Today Show, but in this one, we are talking about the whole Dateline interview. There's going to be some scenes in there that were really interesting. And I know a lot of you caught some edits that sort of cut out kind of coincidentally things that we were talking about in the last video. So this is really, really exciting. As you guys know, I have some special guests. We're going to bring them uh, very soon. I've been having a blast dropping some clues in the community posts, watching you guys guess. So many of you got it right. I was amazed. In fact, there's two people we're going to shout you out who got it right from the first clue. It was amazing. I was blown away. I was like, even, even I had a hard time with the clues knowing what they were. So that's incredible. Thank you, Steffi, for, um, for that. Stayed up till 4 a.m. for this in Australia. And thank you for the super chat, which I'm learning what they are now. Um, and yeah, so a couple of rules for the, for the stream here. First of all, please uh, always remain respectful. We have some moderators checking the chat out. Uh, there is a zero tolerance for bullying here, whether it's towards another commenter, whether it's towards any of the guests. There's respectful ways to uh, disagree, and that's absolutely welcome. But uh, let's try to stay respectful. That's really important. Thank you for that. Um, besides that, just have fun. Let's try to keep the chat relevant to what's going on. Let's not spam in the chat. And uh, yeah, super chats will be uh, addressed. Uh, so so that's I you know something uh, I you know we, we have a moderator who's going to pin them. So super chats, I'll try to answer. I will try to answer questions that are not in the super chat as well. I'm keeping an eye on that. Anyways, uh, it's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to look at some of these scenes here. Let's welcome our guests. So we've been dropping a lot of clues throughout the week as to who these guests are. I'm really excited because all of these guests have one thing in common. They have all at some point absolutely blown me away with their knowledge of behavior, all in their respective sort of departments. So first up, we have someone who has been studying this case for a long time, way before we all you know, got turned on to it with this trial. She's been uh, studying this case for since 2016. So she has a lot more insight, a lot more interesting things where she could compare some of the behaviors to older behaviors. She's also an actress, a director, a, um, a filmmaker. So she has a lot of great insight on when Amber is using acting techniques. And, and I just love it. The last time we were on a stream together, she was saying some stuff and I was like, Pfft. so that's gonna be really awesome. For all of us today, welcome to the stream. First guest, Christina Pykuls. Hello. Hello, Christina. I'm Super so excited. Yeah, me too. I am too. By the way, I learned very recently that it's pronounced Pykuls, not pickles, <laughs> because a lot of other people have mispronounced it. So I wash my hands of that. Yes, but it's okay. It's okay. I love that um, when I sent it to you, I, I put it in. I learned this a few years ago. I put it in writing, and I the way I do it is I write pi cools yeah and i was like and you and then you sent me back a voice and i was like yeah that's it Hi, cool. <laughs> so uh christina super excited to get your perspective here on acting and acting technique as someone who's been both um on screen and on theater you've know, done theater acting some of the insight you have is really exciting can't wait oh we have people from quebec yep, i have my uh i have my trusty script ready to go of uh, uh whatever this Ooh. is whatever this it. is I Second, we have, the, I think this is the person that most people said, if this person is not one of your guests, I'm not even watching. So I feel like this, I feel like at this point, this person is more the star of this channel and I'm oh. like the star of the channel. Um, and also we love to get him all spiced up. Uh, this is why he's here. I have a couple of scenes today. We're going to react to that of the sole intention of getting him, uh, you know, three shades more crimson. <laughs> Everyone, welcome to the channel from Law and Lumber, Rob, who was also, by the way, <laughs> in the room. Rob was, so for those few who don't know, Rob is an excellent lawyer, but also has great insight on behavior. And he was in the room during cross-examination and during closing arguments. Is that right, Rob? Those were the two times yeah, you were there? That was when I was there. Hey, guys, how you doing? The best the times. <laughs> Finally, last but not least, I feel like we need a drum roll or some sort of uh, the final... What was that? The final countdown. Da, 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 da. Uh, my final guest is someone you have seen on the channel before. I talk a lot about how after my degree in social psychology, I studied criminal interrogation. This was one of my biggest influences. Actually, I would say the biggest influence on me learning that and all about that world of um, interrogation, criminal interrogation, behavioral interrogation. This man knows more about 
behavior and persuasion than any person I've met. He's written two best-selling books on the subject. Um, he studied neuroscience at Harvard. He knows he, he knows this stuff more than anyone I've, I've ever met. Like I said, he's got the info. He's got the looks. Ladies and gentlemen, Chase Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> I have, hey, I have to fangirl. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about. Um, oh, I see some people in the comments are um, getting excited. Uh, so we're gonna talk about some of the clues later. But let's let's just jump into some of these videos right now. Uh, get it going. Uh, really excited to do this. So once again, to clarify to all the viewers, um, she so Amber Heard did a full interview on Dateline, and throughout the week they were dropping little clips on the Today Show. So I did a full analysis of that. That's on the channel, pre-recorded. Uh, but today we're looking at the full Dateline thing, and we're looking at some clips, comparing some clips, um, and we're going to get the amazing perspective of these guests. So let's jump right in. Thank you so much. I, I see some excitement um, in the comments about the panel. I'm excited as well. This this was my dream team. I do want to say this. A lot of you guessed Emily D. Baker was going to be. Actually, I'm sorry, Shadow D. Baker, as is her new name that I've christened. Um, and uh, she, she takes Sundays off of social media to be with her family, which I think is really great and really important. Uh, but she will be, she will eventually be on the channel. She just couldn't make this one, but she says hi to all of you and uh, she can't wait to be on the channel. Let's get started here um, with the first clip. Um, so this is from Dateline. Here we go. We're going to pop into this and everyone's going to give their uh, analysis. You're here. Some people might ask, why are you brave? Are you reckless? Are you vindictive? Why did you want to do an interview? The one thing I can tell you is, um, one thing I'm not is vindictive. I'm, there's no part of me that sees any, um, <laughs> this would be a really lousy way to get vengeance. What do you hope to get across here? You've had everything said about you. What do you wish people knew? You know, Savannah, as silly as it is to say this out loud, my goal, the only thing I could hope for at this point, is just want people to see me as a human being. All right, I've been waiting a long time to say this in a, in a square of four people, but here we go. Hold on, here's my moment. Chase, what do you got? I know. <laughs> Perfect. Well, uh, Right here, we notice something on the face that we don't see very often in truthful people, which is asymmetry. And we're seeing some odd facial movements. And you'll notice that when she's talking about the pain of getting insulted or the pain of being abandoned, you're way more likely to see the symmetrical facial movements because that's real and that's genuine. Uh, so when we start seeing asymmetry, that's when we get a little off because the part of the brain that's responsible for your facial expressions is basically between your ears. So if you stick your fingers in there, that's where, you know, we have emotional stuff going on in the prefrontal cortex, the front part of the brain, which is like in the, this little part here, that's a different part. This part of the brain has been practicing facial expressions for a bazillion years. This part is pretty damn new at it. And that's why it sucks at equally flexing those muscles on both sides of the face. So, I, her using Savannah's name was just kind of uh, cringy, and it felt that way. And mm -hmm. this is more the same behavior, I think, this behavior that made the jury think that there was some deception going on. Because all of us make gut feelings. We feel gut feelings all the time, and we're making gut feelings in other people all the time, unconsciously. If this is like the whole of human existence, we've been using language that, that long. We've been using nonverbal communication about that long. So that's why we're really reading nonverbal communication on a subconscious level. And this lower part of our brain that reads other people's nonverbal behavior doesn't speak English. And that's why we get a gut feeling instead of, hey, there's some blink rate going on and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're really seeing here. We're starting to see the asymmetry in the facial expressions. We're seeing some of this more behavior. So we start to get an idea of why the jury started to formulate the opinions that they did. Love that. Thank you so much. I, 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 I'm going to get to my notes, but uh, very similar. And yeah, I think 
a lot of what we saw there is sort of instinctively people pick up on and, you know, Chase can break it down as to why it's happening, but, but love that. Um, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah is just spamming. We're going to, Sarah, we're going to talk about you. Don't worry about it. We're, we're getting to that. Sarah's just spamming the comments. Um, Christina, um, yeah. actually, actually, hold on, Christina. I'm going to save you for last because there's oh. something specific I want to talk to you about. Okay. Rob, got anything on this? So my first inclination was to look at Savannah. Um, when Camille Vasquez started asking questions in cross-examination, my focus was on her as the attorney, kind of seeing how she would approach it. And when this interview starts, Savannah, you see her, she visibly throws her shoulders up. The eyes get really wide and she says, you know, why are you here? And then you hear two large breaths that she takes. She's kind of trying to settle herself down in the interview while asking kind of the big question in the moment. Um, I thought that was really interesting and it kind of, showed me that she's nervous too going into this interview and she's got a lot of notes and a lot of ground to cover. That's a great point. And I love that you said her eyes open up wide. We can pay attention throughout this entire interview with Savannah. There's two baseline behaviors she has with her eyes. One is when Amber says something that makes her disagree or that makes her impatient. We see slow blinks or eye blocking. So we see Savannah will say something like, yeah, but you know, that's not true. Or like, you know, that most people think this, we get those slow blinks. It's sort of like this thing we do and like, just take a moment to pause. And she does that with her eyes when she's shocked or, or, or disagrees with something, wants to emphasize something. We see those eyes open up as she goes, but the jury didn't believe you. So we see these big open eyes. So we're seeing a lot of stuff there. Rob nailed it, man. <laughs> Love it. I love that we get the calm, intelligible Rob before he gets all worked <laughs> up. Oh, yeah, we're there. We're, 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 we're going to start yeah. there. Yeah, For we're going to start there. People say I look like Mark Ruffalo in the comments a lot, but that's the real Hulk down there, bottom bottom right. Um, <laughs> we're going to see the Hulk come out very soon. Um, so I want to talk about two things for me, and one of them is going to – I'm going to kind of pass it over to you, Christina. Uh, the first thing is uh, Savannah asks three things. She says, are you brave? Are you reckless? Are you vindictive? And of those three things, Amber decides to address vindictive. She is showing us which of those three got her emotionally the most involved. And this is something I use. I'm giving you a little bit of my uh, persuasion course here that I, that I do for sales teams. I often do this kind of thing to where if I want to know what someone's priority is, I'll list two or three things and I'll see which one they go to. Uh, and, and Chase, you more than understand this tactic. I also do the same when I communicate with someone to not show my hand. Like, for example, if in a negotiation someone wants to start talking numbers and you just take a second to talk about something else, it shows them that there's no urgency to get to that topic. So basically what I'm saying is I get really good hints about people and what their priorities are when they're presented with a list and they show us which of those three things they want to talk about. So by her attacking the vindictive part of that statement, she's telling us that the reckless thing doesn't really, it's not a priority for her or she might agree with that. She just really wants to tackle the fact that I'm not vindictive. Why would you say I'm vindictive? She almost ignored the two other words, showing us some priority there. Um, we saw a bit of an awkward laugh. This would be a really lousy way to get vengeance. We saw this sort of, <laughs> it wasn't like a genuine, mm -hmm. like, oh, that would be a silly way, like calm, that would be a silly way to get vengeance. She had this <laughs> nervous sort of chuckle, like me, <laughs> vengeance, me, moi. So we got a little bit of that. Um, here's the part I want to talk to you about, Christina. And Chase, you nailed this. You absolutely nailed this. It feels disgenuine because she was asked, what do you want? Why are you here? Look mm -hmm. at the number of things that she said before she answered that. Mm -hmm. You know, Savannah, as silly as this is to say out loud, my goal, the only thing I can hope for at this point, I just want people to see me as human. There are five things she says before she answers the question. Now, instinctively, when we see people buy time, and Chase teaches lie detection. This is something that he will teach. When we see mechanisms to buy time, this could be someone trying to sort of get their thoughts together before they present something. I'm not saying it's deceptive what she's saying. Um, what I'm saying is this. We study this in stagecrafts. Like for, for as a magician, you know, Christina's a theater actress. I'm a stage magician. That's my background, mentalist. We know that if I want to build up drama, suspense, or effect, I might say something like this to you. Like, let's say I'm doing a magic trick for Chase, and I've put a wallet under his hand. He's picked a card. I might say something like this. I might go, and Chase, under your hand, inside that wallet, from the very beginning, was the three of clubs. Hmm. So in drama, 
in suspense. We talk that way to build up to that moment. Hmm. And Christina, I wanted to talk to you about that because I feel like this is the actress in her trying to build drama in this moment with these lines. But to Chase's point, from a behavioral standpoint, it seems this genuine. So Christina, take it away. Yeah, you're gonna see that throughout this whole thing. Um, you know, tiny shout out to maybe Elaine. There's many moments in this entire interview that feel like Amber is milking her final 15 minutes. You know, she she knows this is her moment and she's gonna just take every single second. But it's funny that you said, you know, that's a lot of words that were unnecessary because now I realize I should have used a marker. I cut it down to like two sentences. If, you know, and, and the vindictive thing is fascinating. And this is, you know, these interviews, everyone knows this is a PR reputation repair thing, right? This, this is not a secret. And there's always negotiations about what questions can be asked and her side gets to make suggestions. You know, they get to say, uh, this is this is kind of where we want to go. And right here in this question, they're setting it up. They're saying, you know, Savannah's saying, hey, why are you here? And Amber was given the talking point, most likely. This is the goal, to humanize her. So she says a lot of words to get to, I just want people to see me as a human being. And, you know, the vindictive thing, well, I have thoughts. Um <laughs> She, the, the, you know, that yeah, she, she, she latches on to vindictive. But she doesn't just simply say, oh, I'm not vindictive. No, no. Um, because if, if someone accused me of that in that sort of question, like you said, you've got three questions. Are you brave? Are you reckless? Are you vindictive? If, if I felt like, whoa, uh, no, I'm not vindictive. Far more firm, far more, uh-uh. I'm not vindictive. That's not why I'm here. I'm just here because I want people to see me as a human being. And there's something else that she says here that really just, just leaves me going, why? Because she says, as silly as it is to say this out loud, and that's before the, I just want people to see me as a human. I, I don't understand why she thinks that's silly. I think that is the fundamental thing that all humans would want, you know, to, to be seen as a human being. So again, unnecessary words, but also maybe telling, you know, why do you feel that silly to ask people to see you as a human being? That's that was, a terrific, terrific point. Like, that was a mystery. <laughs> no, you're, you're totally right. And it's funny how sometimes like when she's doing that thing, I'll, I'll think back and go, why did she say those, those words there? And again, I think it's just like, as silly as this is to say, because that's such a soap opera line, you know, like yes. build up that punch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, have a, I have a question for Chase. This, she does something when she's going through these different, um, the vindictive, the, the different examples, and you see how she's mumbling through her words, kind of like I'm doing right now. Um, she does this really quick, boom, 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 I flutter. And you've, I, behavior panel, you guys have mentioned that that's uh, synonymous to like closing down apps in the phone, just flipping the apps off. Is there anything that we're seeing there? Is it like, is she just trying to refocus her brain on this one question that she's supposed to answer? So that's a wonderful question. So most of the time is you'll see that when people are trying to just close off all these other thoughts that they're having and focus on one. And the other instance is when a person is trying to find a file so to speak, like they, mm. they're they searching as many file cabinets as they can for a file. The third is during deceptive statements when the person wants to block their eyes from view. So they'll use the eye flutter as an eye blocking maneuver. So what we're thinking or what we're seeing here is what I think is sending the, this file clerk in 50 different directions to try to grab a bunch of stuff. That's Again, one of these, the, the, this, is, this is why I say you guys would make excellent acting coaches because excessive blinking is one of the worst things you can do on camera. Obviously, this is very distracting, right? Like this is just going to drive you crazy. <laughs> and you do see it a lot in greener actors. And anytime I catch myself doing it, you know, if I'm watching an audition tape, 
oftentimes I know that the reason it happened is there's a sound disturbance happening elsewhere. And, and in my mind, I go, Ooh, is my microphone picking that up because I'm a perfectionist. And the other time is absolutely when you are either not so sure about the dialogue, you forgot your line that, that I'm searching, I'm searching, I'm searching, I'm not listening. And when he says, you know, that blinking also cuts it off. That's why it doesn't work on camera. It's a disconnect from the camera, which is in this, in this case, going to be the audience. So, you know, if I talk like that, you're, you know, you're just going to be like, yeah, it's, which is, you know, the key oldest thing in the book is, and, and you'll probably all now notice we blink as very little as possible. And that's a skill. It is a skill. And sometimes it's harder than others, but she actually does have a tendency of doing this in performance as well. I have, I have noticed that um, not all the time, but certain scenes she'll be excessively blinking. And for someone who's been doing this as long as she has, I would expect that to not appear at least not that often. No. And so, you know, there, there is certainly something searching here happening or, or she's nervous. Uh, you know, Sadie's here. We see her comment right below Chase. Hi, Sadie. Sadie uh, works with the behavior panel. She's the prime minister of behavior. <laughs> processing is, is exactly right. That's what I say. You're processing information. Chase couldn't have said it better. You're either looking for something or trying to process something. When we have a difficulty and our mind is kind of slowing down a little, we see that blink rate. We also do see it in pre-aggression, um, mm -hmm. but I think that's someone trying to calculate what to do next. Like some, you might say something, oh, wait a second, what did you say? You know, like, yeah. what? You want to say that again? You know, and we see that increase, increased blink rate. It might be someone like, did I hear that right? Like, am I, am, and they're processing what they're going to do next. So we might see that um, flutter. We also saw it uh, in, in Chris Rock after he was slapped by Will Smith as he was trying to process what to do next. So yeah, processing is perfect. We good? Can we move on? We're going to get to the super chat in a sec, everyone. Thank you so much. It, it's so amazing to see the community here. Uh, I, I'm so glad to see all of you here. We never know when we plan these lives, you know, what it's going to be. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm, I'm really excited. We good to move on, everyone? Yeah. Cool. You've been found liable for defamation against Johnny Depp. Having been found liable, are you nervous as we are here today about what you can say now? Of course. I took for granted what I assumed was my right to speak. Not just about what I lived through, but what I knew. Do you feel like you could be sued again by him for defamation? I'm terrified, which is what I guess a defamation lawsuit is meant to do. It's meant to to take your voice. <laughs> Rob. Now, as, you, as you all know, as you all know, what, if I had to list my hobbies, I would say like magic, mentalism, playing video games, and getting Rob worked up. That's uh, <laughs> my, my fourth favorite. That clip was entirely for Rob because I... <laughs> He's already like, no, yeah, no. All, all red and ready. Um, so, Rob, I, I, I have a couple of serious questions, and then I, I, I did want to trigger you on that one a little bit. But my question is, what? It, and this, this scene was mostly for Rob. Chase, Christina, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. But, Rob, my question to you is this. Legally speaking, if she were to be on this interview and say, he did hit me, which she did, and, you know, I, I am a victim and all these things, is that – new defamation or is that just her defending her point is she legally allowed to now keep saying that what i said was true or does the verdict inadvertently force her to stop saying all this stuff what are her legal obligations and also at the end there she said that's the point of a defamation i guess to silence me <laughs> so, rob if you <laughs> should we just analyze rob's face please let's um Mm. Um, okay. Dramatic health. Don't put, oh, don't do that. I that. <laughs> Get your unicorn, buddy. Get your unicorn. You need your unicorn. It's fine. Wait. Oh. Stress unicorn. There we go. Squeeze that thing. Oh. All right. So, so first on the defamation question, um, 
I have to give a nuanced answer here because the actual thing we have to focus on is what she, what was actually found to be the defamatory statement. It was those three statements that were viewed in the context of the article as a whole. If the statement was a simple statement of he hit me on Tuesday, June 16th, right? That's a very, very clear statement of fact, and it has a defamatory implication. It is so easy to say that going out and saying that exact phrase again, instantly defamation. And that gets to your first question. Any republication of a defamatory statement is itself a new independent cause of action. Now, the challenge for Johnny Depp in this instance is that you actually have to prove that that action hurt you, caused you damages. You don't have to prove it as an element of the case because it's defamation per se, saying that someone committed a criminal act. You don't have to prove that there was a monetary penalty that went along with it. But if Johnny Depp wants to recover, which provides the incentive against her saying that again in the future, then he has to demonstrate that this statement caused him harm. I think that everyone can agree, um, especially based on uh, Dateline's low, uh, low numbers on the viewing of this interview um, and Johnny Depp's own personal mm, back return to fame at the, after the, the vindication of this trial, that it's, you're going to be hard pressed to say Johnny Depp is injured by, by Amber Heard making this statement, that there's a monetary amount that you can peg to this republication. Um, that said, uh, the whole, this is the purpose of defamation to scare people. Get out of here. No freaking way. No, no. Defamation is to basically say you have a first amendment, right? That's where we start. You have the first amendment right to speak period. End of story. And this is where a lot of people got this wrong in the analysis. They say, well, you don't have the right to statement state lies. No, you actually do. You do. They have the burden to prove it's a lie in response. So you have the right to speak. They have to prove it. What you said was a lie. And then it's defamatory. So you can go out and speak. You just can't go out and tell lies. Defamation litigation isn't there to silence everybody. It's to shut liars up. So Amber Heard, you didn't get the message. And I'm pretty sure if you keep talking, you're going to get another chance to, to, well, receive the message. Hmm. Wow. Thank you for that. That's that I, I was very much wondering, and that really clears it up. Um, as to like what her legal, uh, as to what her legal obligations are, um, anything to add on that? Uh, I, I don't think there was much behaviorally. I mean, we saw a little bit of that chin down, not you know nothing. We haven't talked There's about a great behaviors. Behavior. But mm -hmm. Rob, I have a question for Rob really quick. Since we're, if if I can, uh, what about slander? Slander is slander, libel, and defamation are oftentimes used synonymously. So a slanderous statement is a libelous statement. It is a false statement that implies a, def a defamatory purpose or a slanderous purpose. So okay. you are right. So even now, with slander, damages would have to be proven. You have to prove that there was a monetary injury to it. With, with slander or defamation per se, the statement itself is so nefarious that you the damages themselves are implied, which means as an element, as an element of the offense, you don't have to prove that there was a monetary injury. But the jury's got to find a way to peg a dollar figure to it in order to provide any actual incentive against doing it in the future. Okay. So that's that's why I say there. Um, before you get into the body language, there was something that she did on the stand a lot that she does here. Um, I I refer to it when I talk about it as emotional loading, where she's basically she's amping up. And she, she does a lot of body language to kind of, she's about to go down this emotional road where she wants to bring you in. It's, it's increasing the drama in that moment. And she did it on the stand all the time. She looks down, she does this heave, and then she does like, all of a sudden she comes back up and she's in this scene. She's now here and it's come at me. I'm going to give you all the emotion I've got. Yeah, that was my observation there. Let's go she's through a few behaviors. Yeah, go, go for it. So right at the beginning, uh, Rob, what you were just saying, she's uh, what I think is she is not knowingly doing this, but I think she's practicing the facial expression. She's calling this character up. Christina, you probably speak to that uh, uh, with while she's got her head down there. The whole lawsuit was about her, if you listen here. It was only brought against her and to terrify her and to take her voice. It had nothing to do with Johnny, it was just malicious and it was viewed. It, the whole thing was just him hurting her again. It had nothing to do with him suffering whatsoever. I think that's interesting, uh, interesting little window into how she views the world and how, how she sees the world around her. 
there's some really strong contempt, like a one-sided smile on the face when, right when she says, take your voice and notice it's not my voice. It's your voice. She shifts the pronoun from take my voice to your voice so that other people will identify with it. And the scientific E name for this changing a pronoun to the ethereal you is a, it's called a shift of referential index. And we hear that for sure in here. And we're going to hear it a few more times. And if you go back and listen to her testimony in court, you'll hear it any time that sh she can't legally speak about herself. You can just throw that you in there and then some up trial later down the road. They can say, Miss Heard, is it, is it true you said this, this, and this about yourself? She said, nope, I didn't say me. I said you. So I think that is maybe some advice from her legal team. I just wish, wish we had an attorney in here. Uh, <laughs> I don't think she listened to much advice from the legal team based on this interview. There's too much that she goes away from. There are a few phrases that I think did come from the legal team. We'll get to those in a little bit. Yeah. I think I love how I said there isn't much going on here. And then Chase gave us a masterclass on behavior. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all those things like contempt and stuff. And then her scripting. I have it in notes for other scenes, but, but Chase, I loved everything about what you just said. That was, that was dead on. Christina, anything Thanks. for this one? Yeah, I mean, um, mine is fairly brief as well, but you guys are kind of nailing it. This, you know, the difference is in a regular performance, you wouldn't see this moment. This would be cut out if somebody was doing it or if you're going, if it's a theater performance, you know, you're going to do this before you start the scene. And Amber has this bad habit of doing it right here in front of the camera, in front of the audience, just, you know, advertising as clear as day. I'm preparing for this moment. But what stood out to me is that she's actually getting some direction here in the question, are you nervous? And she prepares herself and then answers the question, and I don't know about you guys, I didn't see an ounce of nerves. She doesn't really act nervous. She right. does this, of course. Well, why didn't you show it, you know? And there's, there's um, she also says the other, the other action, you know, is, um, it's again, nerves, nerves, nerves. And then uh, Savannah said something else. And Amber just, she answers, but she doesn't actually take it. And, oh, terrified. I'm terrified. I didn't think she looked terrified at all. You know, she says the words, but there's nothing there. And so. No, show, don't tell. Yeah. Yeah. She is bad at showing. <laughs> <laughs> and not honestly very great at telling either. <laughs> but, you know, for, for a film actor, again, yeah, you show it, show it. So where are these emotions, Amber? You say you feel them and yet you're not showing them. But she sure is doing a whole lot of preparing for them. And wow. she, she does this over and over and over again. I don't think you actually chose the longest one, which uh, I think was in the first clip that made me just, laugh for 10 <laughs> minutes um yeah listen I, I i i know it sounds like we're really on our case here but but it's it's there it's there for the taking like there's just so much going on in these answers that deviates from what you would expect to see and i don't want us to come off as like unfairly being like she sucks at this it's just there's so much like you know we have a, a lawyer we have probably the biggest behavior expert in the world. We have an actress and, you know, a mentalist who studied behavior as well. And from all four of our perspectives, there's just so much in this interview that we're looking at and going, sorry, that ain't it. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm sorry if it comes off that way. It's not, it's not our intention by any means, but you know, it, we're just calling out as we see it. And Rob's getting all worked up for, with, with reason. There are things that are being said that are triggering for someone who has devoted his life to uh, the legal system the way Rob has. Um, I love this, by the way. You know, people are saying in the comments how great this panel is. I agree. You know, like 
people from four different walks of life, all really great. We, I feel like we should come up with a name for this, kind, like sort of like the body <laughs> line, or like uh, oh, behavior panel. I feel like that's, <laughs> a good, that's, a good name. that's a good name. Great name. Um, it's time for a plug. So if you are enjoying this, uh, please go follow all the guests. After this is done, after live is done, I'm going to put all the links in the description. They are also in the chat, sporadically being posted. Uh, Christina does some great content on, you know, acting. She's also done a bunch of great stuff on, on Amber. Uh, Rob is a damn genius. He's intimidating how great his videos are for someone who's new to the game. He's like flying, doing some great, uh, analysis, legal analysis. I like Chase it. has two channels. Chase has his own channel where he posts amazing, really curated content, but I compare his main channel to a, to a, like a solar eclipse. It happens like twice every 10 years, but, but when it does, it's amazing. Um, but he's also on a channel called the behavior panel, which is four of the world's biggest experts on behavior. I've learned so much from all four of them. We're going to leave links in the chat, in the description, go follow them. They do great analysis of current events, uh, interrogations, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, those of you who are commenting, you all know, but for those of you who don't, please go follow them. You will learn a ton. Also, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you're not, it'll help this video get out there and bring more visibility to these amazing guests. Sarah, this is a CEO time? for Chase Hughes. Also, I guess this is the time to say it. Chase, is this the time? Is it time? This is a perfect time. We have big news to announce. I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy about this because bam, Chase and oh. Sarah Hearts are breaking. Yay. Congratulations <laughs> to all of us here. Big congrats. I think you that's know, the first post. That's the first announcement. Yeah, I wanted I wanted exclusivity on the announcement. Um it I I wish I wish everyone to find someone that treats you and looks at you the way Chase looks at Sarah. And it's mutual, it goes both ways. But it's it's it usually like you know we see that kind of attention and love and caring from women, but but to see Chase around Sarah is a sight for size. Chase has this thing on on video where like he brings that you know ex military behavior panel sort of stern serious, but behind the scenes he is a teddy bear. He has a onesie like towel that he wears after his shower. I'm allowed to say it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah yeah it's this one it's hilarious. Like it's true, it's hilarious, but uh. Around Sarah, like it, Chase, I'm so happy for you, man. You guys are made for each other. I, I, I love the you that's around Sarah, and I hope it remains forever. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. But how do you know about this towel onesie? Uh, I, you know, we're I, not I, asking I, that question. Yeah. So, so Rob, Rob, as my lawyer, Rob, Rob is, <laughs> yeah, don't answer. Don't answer. Play the, I, play I, the fifth. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Rob, I'm gonna plead the fifth uh, as my counsel has advised. Scene three. Oof. Okay, here we go. The Depp team argued that you were the abuser, that you instigated physical violence. Did you? I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. When you're living in violence and it becomes normal, as I testified to, you have to adapt. You adopt strategies to cope with it. If, and if it meant... As I testified to, if it meant the difference between a broken nose or a, a, a sore cheek, I would do it. What about the witnesses who said they have seen you instigate physical violence? Did they all come in and lie in court? I'm, you know, less interested in sitting here, you know, relitigating it with you. I am not here to call any of his witnesses any names. I'm not here to do that. I'm, I'm here to just kind of talk about it from yeah. what it felt like for me as the person who sat there. Anyone want to go first? I'll do a <laughs> breakdown. I'll do a quick uh, behavioral breakdown, if that's cool. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so we're here now we're hearing even more of the pronoun shifting to where she's not talking about herself. She's saying you and she's talking about you for some reason. And she's not talking about herself during very critical moments here. I don't have time to dig real deep into that, but that's times where she can get in trouble or times when she wants you to identify with it mostly. And I would just, just the sentence broken nose or sore cheek. I would do it. 
I don't understand. And uh, Christina, you had a great word for that when we were off in the green room or whatever it's called before we filmed. And uh, I brought some ranch uh, to go along with the word salad uh, that we're going to be hearing uh, for the next uh, next few clips as well. That's that's literally what I titled this 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 whole portion. I was like, oh, I call it word vomit um yeah because that was a lot of words not exactly sure there's a coherent thought or any sentences in there it's tough so finally really quick she's got some contempt on her face nasty yeah. contempt some? hatred disdain mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it but it's contempt right at the moment she's talking about the other witnesses especially the ones that she referred to as randos and random mm -hmm. people Kind of like maybe his ex-wife just randomly chosen, I guess, to, to come into the courtroom. But she's saying a person who sat there. I'm saying this from the perspective of a person who sat there. This is an example of a canned line. This is a rehearsed line. It's just a perspective of the person of what I saw when I sat there. But I want you to think about uh, everything that's going on here. There's an assumption, and all of this is my opinion, uh, there's an assumption of stupidity in you the same way I think that she did when she explained her loss and everything else in her life. Uh, the case was lost because of people being convinced because they don't know better. Johnny's a good actor. The jury doesn't know everyone's so stupid that they're convinced he has scissors for hands. Uh, She's not really calling them stupid, but you can hear her beliefs in every excuse that she uses for losing the case. It's because people are dumb. Why did she lose the case in England? Oh, or why did she win it? Because there's a judge. This one, there's a jury full of idiots or full of people who were easily persuaded. And the whole thing is about this easily persuaded people. And I think not really one time will you see her take much ownership here. And I think that's the next clip or uh, a clip that we have coming up and I'll, I'll leave it alone till then. Yeah. I get to give an alternative theory to chase. Ooh. My, my instinct is to, to pass it to somebody here. I'm so used yeah. to I'm, I'm <laughs> it. Chase is going to be like, wait, so Chase, can you say it? Can you say it? Yeah. Can you say it? And that's uh, all I got. Rob, what do you got? Oh, that was good. That was okay. Good. That made me feel good. All right, now I feel good. Rob, Rob, I feel like at some point Chase is going to be like, uh, and yes, yeah, so that's what I saw there. Greg, what are you heard? Oh. <laughs> Out of habit. No. So to to kind of push back on what you were saying, when she when she shows that contempt, the snarl, um, I don't think it's really to the witnesses, because I focus on the word she says before that. She says twice in the sentence leading up to that, as I testified, as I testified. Mm -hmm. And then the sentence immediately following that snarl, um, I'm less interested in relitigating it with you, directing at Savannah. And this is kind of the first time in the interview where Savannah gets confrontational with Amber. And she has just talked about testimony, 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 gets questioned on that and then says, I'm not interested in relitigating it with you. And it was the, that was my inclination there. And I was going, this is going to be an interesting interview. I wish I was on the cutting room floor and saw all the outtakes. I agree with you. 100%. That was, there were two contempts in the video. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. Let's make this simple. Awesome. You're both right. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, if you're against me, I feel contempt towards you. So a witness what, who testified against me, contempt. Savannah, that was confrontation, contempt. And it did happen right there. And Chase, I'm shocked and surprised that you didn't mention this because immediately after that statement, I'm, not in, I'm less interested in relitigating this with you. Uh, as she said, any of his witnesses, we saw something you taught me. Both her hands went into stop gestures, which is weird because usually she's curled like this. She's like this, a lot of this. But in that moment, in that exact moment, both hands did this. And stop gestures is Chase has taught me an enormous amount on paying attention to fingers. When they move inwards, we call this digital flexion. This can happen with stress, pre-aggression. When we relax, comfortable, confident, fingers move outwards, fingers relax with us. But there's a point to which they go past that in this kind of jerky thing, which is like, stop. We're not talking about this. And it happened right there in that confrontation. In fact, maybe we could go back a little so you guys could see all of what we just talked about with that contempt, from with that stop gesture. What it felt like for me as a person who sat there as witnesses 
there we go. Than sitting uh, here, contempt? you know, relitigating it with you. I am not here to call any of. Boom. Stop gesture. Both hands come out. Yes. Yeah, so there, we saw the contempt as well for both. There was one. Con there was two different mm -hmm. expressions of contempt there. Yeah. There's the second one about the witnesses. I saw the first one that time. Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. So I feel like we have a lot of contempt and that stop gesture is unmistakable, right, Chase? Like she's talking like this and then boom, both hands just to this. It is. So I'm trying not to talk about anything that would require me to just go on some big dialogue or monologue. Right. Sorry. I guess I covered the monologue. Um, uh, sure. Lana Guthrie here, we have that, that open eye. Uh, what about the witnesses? Like this is where we're seeing that sort of like Savannah tells us when she disagrees with Amber because those eyes open up and she goes, what about those witnesses? Did they all come out and lie? Like we have these open eyes. Like, did, is that what you're trying to tell me here? So whenever she's suspicious, we get those open eyes. That's everything I have. Uh, Christina, what do you got? Yeah. You know, for me, there was a line that's just jumped out, jumped out because I would say this is a non, non denial answer. The, I never had to instigate it. That's a weird choice of phrase. Um, no one ever has to instigate physical violence, right? I mean, you typically shouldn't. Um, you know, as bad of an actor as she is, she's a worse writer. She should really have fired her writer. Um, because why not say... I never instigated any violence. I was only defending myself. I was only protecting myself. You know, again, her answers aren't as firm as she seems to think they are. They're very mm, I mm, wishy washy. Um, and of course, a, a lot of words here, a lot of words that don't need to be here, obviously. <laughs> but she does have this this magical skill of telling on herself because she just keeps talking. She just keeps adding words. And I do feel that arrogance that comes through all the way. This, I know better than anyone. I'm smarter than anyone. I can fix this. You just don't understand. Let me explain it to you. And my personal theory is the reason, one of the reasons this interview even happened is because, you know, she sent Elaine out there and Elaine did a couple of interviews. It's okay, Rob. It's okay. Um, <laughs> and Elaine did a terrible job. She just did a terrible job um, in every conceivable way. And I think Amber had a real firm reaction to that and said, no, you know what? You stop, you stop. I'll go do this. I can do better. I can convince people that, you know, I'm not a monster. I'm not a terrible person. I'm just a human being. I'm a victim. I'm you know, just see me as a human and, and forgive me, please. Um, you know, this is her apology tour, but it's rather lacking in an apology. So there's that. <laughs> but then th that, that ending of, you know, she's saying all these words and to, to say, as a person who sat there, I do agree that's a line that she, she seems to reuse, Chase, and she uses it in the weirdest places, when, you know, that's not necessary. You don't have to tell us that you were a person who sat there. We know you sat there. You know, this was your trial. You were there. Okay. You can talk yeah. about your feelings without saying, and I was there. Yeah, to that point, to that, and Chase and I debate this a lot. Um, we, there's something called referral statements in, in behavior analysis. And a lot of analysts out there say that it should belong in a cluster of deception. A lot mm -hmm. of analysts disagree, Chase being one of them. For me, I've gone back and forth a lot, but I think I've landed, you know, where Chase is to where a referral statement isn't necessarily deceptive because you're as likely to see it in people being honest, but it is at the very least a need to show consistency. In her case, she says it a lot in this interview. As I testified, as I said, there's a statement where she says, as I testified twice in one sentence. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're going like, I already testified about this. Like, like it, it should have been clear. And, and like, I'm, but I'm, I'm saying it again because I'm very consistent. Look, I'm, you know, people say I change my story all the time. I don't change my story because I testify to this and I'm saying it again. So I, I think that's part of the reason she says that a lot because she's gone on social media and she's seen people saying she keeps changing her story. So now she's going, 
as I testified, in other words, what I'm about to say is consistent. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm consistent. So that's what we're getting there. Right, Chase? Can we agree on that? Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. By the way, sorry, I saw the comments, people saying my mic was off like an idiot. I put my, uh, my notepad on my mic. So uh -oh. I yeah, the only takeaway you need from my, that whole muffled spiel before is stop gestures. When we're that uncomfortable, was, it, come in. It was You're pretty fired. clear. It was <laughs> clear. Um, okay, this next clip, uh, I want you to watch and observe and, <laughs> and listen to the video. But uh -oh. I also want all of you to pay attention to Rob's face. Yep. Because... This is uh, this is going to be a lesson on behavior, but also volcanic eruptions and how they happen. <laughs> you have your unicorn, buddy? I'll join There's you. There's another trial dealt with the same substantive issues, handled differently by a, a judge instead of a jury. Johnny Depp sued the son, a British tabloid, over an article it published describing him as a wife beater. We prevailed overwhelmingly the jury in the u.s trial wasn't allowed to hear about that judgment and amber says that by the time she got up to tell her side of the story i do the court of public opinion here had already turned against her take it away buddy <laughs> all right so we're gonna start calm with just the uh what i saw what she did with the judge and then she does a instead of jury she does a kind of dismissing any any implication that jury would somehow um have merit or the system of jury would have merit as opposed to a judge who perhaps she respects because he reached a conclusion referring to that freaking trial and she uses the word we mm. we when that interview and when she said the word we i almost lost it because she was not a party to the sun action she was not a litigant in that action. That was Johnny Depp versus the son. She was brought into that case as a witness because the son had to prove that they were justified or rather that they had reason to believe that what they heard from Amber Heard was truthful. And that's, that's, the, big, that's the big clarification here. The jury wasn't allowed to hear that because there could be nothing more prejudicial than to suggest to a jury that they don't have a role anymore, mm -hmm. that they don't have to hear something because another court heard it. There's something called comedy. Comedy is a, record, a court giving respect to a court of another jurisdiction. In order to find that, there has to be certain things that have to line up. It has to be the same parties to the action. The party has to have the exact same opportunity to say what they want to say and then to defend what they want to say in cross-examination. They have to be subjected to the same type of evidentiary rules, the same type of discovery burdens. In the Sun trial, Amber Heard didn't have to produce jack shit. She didn't have to produce anything. She did produce what she wanted to, but they didn't have the opportunity to go and dive into that information. They didn't have the ability to subpoena her cell phone, for example. They didn't have the ability to go and force her to answer questions under oath multiple times and get those statements out. Now, she did. She issued written statements that led in large part to her downfall in this particular trial because they were remarkably inconsistent, awkward, didn't line up. But to imply that that trial was the adjudicatory process of her is complete bullshit. That was the son. That was the son defending why they wrote what they wrote and giving them a reason to explain, we had good cause to believe that what we wrote was truthful. That wasn't Amber Heard on trial. Sorry, honey, you took the stand. You gave absolute BS testimony. I, I haven't seen anyone take the stand and so brazenly um, attempt to mislead a jury. And she's right. Her legal team tried to bring up the UK trial multiple times. Multiple times they tried to bring it up and every single time it's objected to because it was properly objected to. That has no business being in this courtroom. And now that she's trying to go out after the fact, and sorry, Amber, I, I know that you don't want to relitigate this with us, but you were just found to have committed defamation. You now want to go back and bring up a previous determination that didn't involve you, that was stricken from this trial and use that to cast aspersions on this court system and this outcome. No, I'm sorry. Get, get off the screen. Like you don't deserve any more of our time. Rob just said, mm -hmm. cast 
aspersions. Rob just said, cast aspersions. <laughs> I did. I'm that, not I aware. Am. I'm not. Well, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm not sure if you know this, Rob. Amber's team actually tried to use the UK judgment to get the Virginia oh, no. case dismissed. I know. I read the motion to dismiss. I read the response. Mm -hmm. I read the order that was entered by Judge Ascarati that kept it in here and kept it out. kept that decision out. That argument was fully briefed, mm -hmm. argued, and the order was entered weeks, 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 weeks prior to this trial even beginning. And so the, they, the yeah, they explanation, knew. yeah, the explanation was remarkably thorough too. It was mm -hmm. remarkably thorough and comprehensive. That order is publicly available to everyone to go read it. I strongly suggest you do, because if you believe a single word that Amber Heard is saying in this regard, or Elaine Bredehoff for that matter, that order casts all those things into the fire that they need to burn in. Yep. Not the people, <laughs> the statements, not the people, the statements, <laughs> the statements. <laughs> Wow. And there goes your monetization, right? Whoopsie. Uh, right, what? I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what's going on. I just, I don't care. <laughs> uh, Rob, to be fair, I think she uses we and they synonymous. <laughs> like pledge and donate. I, like, I see what you did there. Yeah. I see what you did there. I like that. <laughs> um, Chase, anything on this one? Yeah. It's like saying I donate allegiance to the flag. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, all right. So the whole thing is about a judge being smarter than a jury. So this mm -hmm. is kind of a thing with some titles here. And you're going to see this again when she talks about a doctor. You're going to see her accentuate a doctor's title here in just a few minutes. So juries are easily persuaded, uh, just like the people on social media. They're all they're all hateful because they were misled and persuaded a certain way. And uh, it has nothing to do with who Johnny is as a person. It's because he's a character. He's an actor. He's uh, convinced them all that he has scissors for hands as well. That was an actual quote. Uh, that was a paraphrasing exactly what she said there. Mm -hmm. so they were persuaded by an actor, not facts. Mm -hmm. This is the level of intelligence. Or just imagine what level of intelligence would you have to believe someone has to be persuaded by everything else but facts and just social media and Edward Scissorhands. What level of intelligence would you have to have for you to be that person? So you have to be kind of dumb. And uh, I think a smart per person looks at the facts and she does not think that that's anyone in the jury or anyone on, on social media. And I think anyone else in, in, that she's looking at all, including the jury, were, per, were persuaded by just the acting ability and just a bunch of hot air that I think you, the entire worldview that we're seeing with her here is starting to really come out because the only people, as she's describing the entire world and social media and the jury, the only people that would fall for all of that stuff are low intelligence people or easily misled kinds of people. Christina, what do you got? Ah, it <laughs> <laughs> My life is complete now. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, she was not a party. We know this. Um, but of course she wants to talk about the UK trial because she, in her mind, thinks she won. And this, the reality is, though, had she had had Johnny won the UK, Amber wouldn't have any more respect for that judge than she has for this jury. You know, this is this is Amber only respects people who agree with Amber. It's pretty obvious. And again, she was just a witness. And, you know, there's something else that another talking point that she keeps using this. He keeps dragging me to court. He keeps dragging me to court. He keeps dragging me to court. Well, in the UK, she initially did not want to participate and then all of a sudden changed her mind. And then she actually asked for an exception to sit in the courtroom every single day. I didn't know that. Yes. She asked for that exception Probably. and it was allowed. So she didn't, she didn't get drug into the courtroom in the UK. 
she went with bells on in her little black dress. She wanted to be there. And that's how she she listens to everybody's testimony. She changes her witness statements. She she gave like seven in the end, um, because as every time someone would testify, Amber would fix her story or create a new one. And it wasn't actually just Amber. It was Amber and her sister. Oh, her sister was worse. And so, you know, she again, she's trying to spin this just false narrative, this implication that it's Johnny dragging me to court over and over and over again. Well, Johnny only invited her to court once. And she lost. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's a rewriting of history. Um and, and she knows that the audience watching this, or she probably hopes that the audience watching this doesn't know any of those details. So that's why she says we prevailed. I, uh, I didn't know. Beautiful, beautiful insight, Christina. Thank you. Yeah. Like, this is one of the reasons I want Christina here because she has all the history on this. You can't hide from Christina. Can't Sadly, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Chase, is there a way I could just take that portion of my brain and throw it out? Because that... <laughs> You yeah, know. we'll do we'll do some hypnosis after this. We'll, we'll right. get it fixed. Oh, can I sign up too? I need to get I need to forget so much of this. <laughs> start a fund. I need I need to buy Rob a massage chair or something. We start there's a fund. just yeah, there's just not enough alcohol and, and marijuana. I've I've tried. <laughs> wow, all right. So I'm not just gonna be demonetized for this. I'm gonna owe YouTube money. That's fine. Um <laughs> I do want to say one quick note that I had here. Um, when I was younger, my mom is an amazing cook. My mom is a phenomenal cook. All my friends, we all know this, everyone in the family, she's incredible. Now, when we were younger uh, and it was, you know, we had dinner with the family every, every night and my mom would make something and she would ask, as we were eating it, she would ask, how, how does it, how is it? Is it good? You know, and we would all go, it's delicious, but maybe one of us, maybe my brother that day would say, I'm not a big fan. It was, it was better last time, you know, or something along those lines. Suddenly in that moment, my brother knows nothing about food in that, on that night, my brother, what, what do you know? You know, Spidey knows, Sp Sp Spidey knows, Spidey, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Spidey knows the next day. Maybe I'm not a fan of the food. You know, maybe I'm, maybe I like the spaghetti better than what she made that night. All of a sudden I know nothing about the food. My brother is the expert tonight because he likes it tonight. This reminded me so much when Amber was like in the UK, it was the judge. Okay. And here it was just a jury. What would happen if the jury had agreed with her and the judge had not, I can pretty much guarantee you that it would be, well, in the UK, it was just one judge. Mm -hmm. And over here in the States, it was a jury of our peers that listened to everything. And this sort of this confirmation bias of giving more importance to the person whose opinion aligns more with your objective is um, is something I'm well familiar with. <laughs> and here's the second part. We're, we're giving them more importance and then re-borrowing authority from them Yeah, in our exactly. language. Ab absolutely brilliant point. Yeah, my, my, I'm, I'm going to hear from my mom after this. Did you talk about me on your stream? Yeah, that, that phone's going to be ringing. I would check your phone now. Just make sure it's yeah. on vibrate. Your mom is an amazing, incredible artist uh, as well as a cook. That's Thank you, Chase. She's going to be so touched that you said that. She she asked me, like, I want to learn this, this you know, this uh, behavior analysis stuff. I'm so fascinated. What do I do? And I said, just get Chase's book. And she did it. She's, she's so in love with it. She thinks she's a behavior analyst now. Like, she's always telling me, like, I was talking to this person. They were doing that. She knows all the terms, too, Chase. Like, she's she is, like... Wow. devouring your book yeah she loves it so but but she thank you so much for that she is an amazing artist i'll show you guys at some point some of her art on the channel um but yeah not to say she's the only one you know like we all tend to do that a little bit you know like sort of give more importance to the people who agree with our conclusions so yeah but I just, it was just funny how i saw it there uh, is everyone good on that one yep Let's talk about really quickly because people are asking in the chat and people were DMing me about this uh, the whole t all you know the whole week what these mysterious clues were that I was dropping in the uh, in the community post was I having some sort of mental breakdown or was there any sense to this so a, a lot of you were trying to guess what the clues meant a lot of you did really really good really good and uh, I have them here to show you so the very first clue about the guests that I gave now now uh, disclaimer. 
all these clues were done at a time where I thought Christina's last name was pronounced Pickles because I've heard it pronounced that way by a lot of other hosts and, and <laughs> people. So I thought it was Pickles. Um, okay. The, the first clue we had was, was this one. Uh, so the first hint was I said predicaments, steal, and pursue were the three first clues that I gave. And those were synonyms with their names. So if you're in a predicament, you're in a pickle. Uh, to steal is to rob and to pursue is to chase. And a big congratulations to... Uh, I believe this round's Jillian, who nailed it from that first one. Wow. Right away. Like, that was from the first clue, which I thought was really difficult, because even my girlfriend, who knows who the guests were, was having a hard time putting that one together. She was like, okay, Chase, Pursue, I get that, but she's having a hard time with the other ones. Jillian, you're a genius. And uh, Beth, not only got all three, but uh, but said... Would also love to see Dough Maker, which is Baker, Emily D. Baker. So that, that I just love that. Uh, that. <laughs> but that's incredible how you put all three. The second clue we saw in the community post was this, which is a emoji that represents their uh, professions because Christina is a theater actress, but also a screen actress, Rob and the Scales of Justice. And uh, Chase served 20 years in the uh, Navy where he owned a lot of his skills. So that's what that one was. And then the third one, I gave a clue here. I said, uh, this might make more sense to me because I was raised in Quebec, which is the reason I speak French. So all of these, once translated into French, tell us who the guests are. Hunt in French is chasse, so, so chase. Uh, dress, the noun, not the verb. So like a dress in French is une robe, so robe, robe. And uh, spade her, that was a bit of a tough one, but spade in French, the cards in the cards, like the hearts, clubs, spades. Spades in French is pique. And her is L, so pick L, so pickle. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so a lot of you got that right. This was uh, Ria. Good job. You actually got that pick, although it's spelled P I Q U E. But there it is. Pick L was one of the few that understood that that uh, spade her joke, the uh, uh, twist of words. So there it was. Those were the clues. Uh, sorry for tormenting you all mentally, but but a lot of you guessed. <laughs> so congrats. Uh, that doesn't that the point? <laughs> was that Christina? I said, isn't that the point to torment people mentally? I think that's what it was. I think that's um, what you do, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As in like, I put this clip intentionally to trigger Rob. <laughs> listen, listen, I get a lot of uh, comments saying how much they appreciate you when you're triggered because I feel like when Rob made his first appearance on these streams, he was very collected, like very calm, very collected. And then something happened where we saw that side of him and, and the internet once more. So... I believe it was the Elaine Bredahoff PR tour, which I just have to say, Rob, you said everything I wanted to say in one video. It was just, you guys went off. You went off and it was beautiful. <laughs> and what was great was the number of DMs from actual survivors who sent me messages and the hundreds and actually, I think it's in the thousands now, people who emailed me, DM'd me, and they said, I'm an actual victim. Thank you so much for saying that. We don't, we are not Amber Heard. We know that. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's I good mean, to hear, man. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're, that's a, it's such a dangerous talking point they're running with, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge uh, sort of driving force for me as well, Rob, to get those messages of people saying, you know, thank you. And even, even like, thank you for bringing Rob on because the, the passion you have to defend victims or to stand up for survivors, rather, I apologize, is, uh, is amazing. Um, Thank you. Yeah, let's move on, shall we? And, and by the way, I feel the same for, for all of you. You wouldn't be on my channel if I felt that it, w it wasn't sincere and heartfelt, every, everything you say, all of you. Here we will be here. You know, one question really quick, I think they should have asked her, or I would have asked her personally. If you could go back in time, would you still publish that article and put your name on it? Ooh. Yeah, I really want to know the answer to that. I think there'd be a long pause and then a yes with a nod. And then it would, she'd try to go into some self aggrandizing statement about how she was a representative and could stand. And she would take that. She would take this beating again. If she had the opportunity. Yes, I agree. Wow. She would do it again in a heartbeat. I think she would say, I want to say yes to you, Savannah. <laughs> I want to say yes to you right now. But so much of this trial has been about casting aspersions. So I pledge to answer that question at a future time. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was my mm -hmm. All right, let's go. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, when you say to someone, I bought a house, are you lying? Because oh you have God. not paid for it in full at that point. I made a, a pledge and that pledge is made over time by its nature. You're splitting hairs a little bit there because when you say I donated, you know that everybody thinks that you've donated it, not that you've pledged it. So for the jurors sitting there, do you think they felt like that was you getting caught in a lie? I, I don't know because so much of the, I feel like so much of the trial was meant to cast aspersions on who I am as a human, my credibility, to call me a liar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start on this one. Um, we talked about cast dispersions and I, I apologize in my video. I thought she was saying dispersions because when Ben Chu said he said cast dispersions and the T of cast went to, and I was like, I don't even understand what that means, but he said, it and she said it, I didn't realize that aspersions is a word. So I apologize. I do know that I got it wrong, but I stand by the fact that those are not her words. Ben Chu said it numerous times in his interviews, cast dispersions, cast dispersions. And she said it here again, and she kind of muttered it a little. Uh, she does this a lot. She borrows words from, other people and sometimes she doesn't even say them quite right here she said it right i'm the one who said it wrong uh ironically but uh chase have you seen my have you have you seen my amber heard magic trick yet i haven't With, oh you haven't my best friend doesn't watch my videos um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of you a lot of you have seen this but uh but you've but, seen uh, my calendar spidey I have, <laughs> zero zero guilt i apologize for what i just said non sequitur uh, yeah so, uh, so Chase, this is just for you. The, the viewers have seen this, but this is just for you. So I have a dollar bill over here, uh -huh. okay, and uh, one U.S. dollar. Now there is a lawyer here, so I can't say that I wrote something on this because that's defacing money. But somebody wrote something on this. Somebody wrote this down. So this is money pledged. It says pledge. Now yes. watch. If I just give that a fold like this, another fold over here, another fold there, I say the magic word, which is synonymous. Give it a little pop like that. Go here. One more magical gesture. <gasps> wow. It's basically the same word though. So it is. So, so this is the reason I created this is for all of us. That's amazing. It's like, whoa, it changed. If Amber saw this trick, she'd be like, what happened? Nothing happened. <laughs> that, 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 I don't see a difference. I, yeah. Yeah, like, that's, <laughs> money. that's really good. Uh, thanks, buddy. Thank so, you for that um, private demo. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you how I did it later. Um, so here we see Savannah Guthrie getting a little confrontational. You're splitting hairs a little bit there, and I like that she does that. That she just stops that dead in its tracks, and it's not in that way that, you know, Camille Vasquez was pretty aggressive about that to say like, it, misheard, misheard. I don't use it synonymously. Um, so, but Savannah is still pretty, pretty like stern on that. A um, couple of interesting things about her. So she says. Uh, you know, everybody thinks you donated. And at that point, so before she says, when you say donated, we get a double shrug. You, you know what? I wrote it more clearly here. You know, everybody thinks there's an eye block. So when she says, you know, everybody thinks we see slow blink, the eyes close, eye block, slow blink. Basically she's closed her eyes. And that's what I was saying earlier. It's that little bit of like impatience. Like, you know, you know, when you say this, like a bit of Lord, give me patience. Um, She's losing patience. You donated it. Uh, everyone thinks you don't. Sorry, I, I, my notes are a mess. When you say you donated, it, every, everyone thinks you donated. And at that point, we get a single shrug like this with her eyes wide open. And single shrugging is usually a, a lack of confidence. Double shrug is, I don't, I don't know. I actually don't know. Single shrug is usually when we're not very confident in an answer. So as Savannah Guthrie is saying, you know, when you say you, when people think when you say you donated, that you actually donated. And now the eyes open up wide with that single shrug, like she's shocked and not too confident in that, in that synonymity, which is a word I may have just made up, I'm not sure. Uh, Amber sticks to it. She sticks to that sort of, you know, when I say donated, like when you buy a house and this house metaphor, please, when I buy a house from you, you can go spend that money. When you pledge money to a charity, the children at that hospital cannot use that money. So I'm not buying it. Um, mm -hmm. I think she's just sticking to it at this point because to admit that it's a bad metaphor would undo what she said on the stand. And I don't think she's very good at that. Uh, Chase, this is a big opportunity that I wanted to 
talk with you about interrogation technique because we are seeing in this Savannah getting a little bit more, if we think about that good cop, bad cop thing, we're seeing a little bit about bad cop come out. And I know you talk about how good cop, bad cop isn't actually a thing. That's just Hollywood. But Chase, what do you think of this um, interrogation technique or let's call it interview technique coming from Savannah here with this little bit more of a confrontation or do you think overall she handled it well? Um, go ahead. I think she did a great job. And when she's saying you're splitting hairs, this is called uh, the positive confrontation stage of an interview where we transition from an interview mode into an interrogation mode. And we start making a confrontation is the beginning of that kind of second phase. And the confrontation does not mean that I'm being a dick to somebody. The confrontation is just if, if I'm just doing it and my motto is, if I'm over the level of Andy Griffith in that interrogation room, I'm a bad interrogator, period. And mm -hmm. so I might say something like, you know, Spidey, I've been doing this a long time. And if there's one thing I know after doing this for 22 years, it's when I'm not getting the full story. So it's a, it's a confrontation, but it's soft. And she softens this. She says it sounds like we're splitting hairs a little bit, I think is what she says. Yeah. She leaves it open-ended. Yeah. And uh, I think she uses elicitation on her statement uh, on this confrontation, just like I did. I say it's not, uh, I know when I'm not getting the full story. I didn't ask a question, but it's definitely going to elicit a response from the other person. And that's brilliant. Uh, it almost looks like she's taken a, like a read technique class. I completely agree where, where she, there seems to be a really nice balance between her sort of empathizing and socializing like uh, Amber's position. And even in those confrontational moments, we see a little bit of those darts, but it's not. And sometimes Amber does take it a little aggressively and get on the defense. But I think, and I think there are moments where it gets a little like sort of jabby, but overall, like even in the beginning, and I talked about this in the in the full analysis video, uh, where she said something like, you know, a lot of people don't sympathize with you and Johnny at all. And she throws Johnny into that, where I think that's a misrepresentation. I think a lot of people do sympathize with Johnny, but by saying that, she, evil, she evens the playing field. And she does a lot of these little statements where it's kind of like she's a little bit on Amber's side. And I, I dare say she sort of projects that she's, more on Amber's side than she actually is. And I think she's doing a very good job at doing that. If I'm interviewing a person that I would like to be in jail or would like to have in jail or like to confess to this crime, I'm going to appear a lot more on their side during that interview than is actually real. So I think we're, that's also what we're seeing. It's another interrogation technique. It's also just good TV and making, making it look fair and balanced and, uh, but it's that's also the interrogation technique. I'd be doing the same thing in the interrogation room. Absolutely, yeah, terrific. Rob, as a as a you know lawyer, any perspective here on the interview technique? Two things. One, I hundred percent agree with Chase, and the only added observation is that as an attorney, you think about cross examining a witness that's hostile. You don't leave it open. You don't leave that. You don't leave it open so they can then fill backfill the words or clarify what you just said. You close the door. Savannah leaves that door wide open, allowing her to jump in and give an analogy or to explain. The second observation is you guys mentioned about things that she takes from other people and that she takes words and phrases. This uh, house argument, the mortgage argument, this is something that Elaine Bredehoff said in her closing argument, which I thought was very scattered. And I think she thought of it in the moment. She didn't really think of it ahead of time because it doesn't make sense. So she, Amber Heard repeats it again, but the reason it doesn't make sense as she repeats it because she heard it in closing, Elaine said it. So she's just kind of parroting that phrase. The reason it doesn't make sense is when you buy a house, you sign something, you sign a promissory note, you actually commit something and your house is then there is a lien on that house until you pay back that pledge that you is have now promised to pay that's why that analogy makes zero sense and the fact that she's repeating it here i mean elaine after her closing if i'm her i'm going i didn't think that through but amber heard it during closing arguments thought it made sense to her didn't think it through says it here to national tv 
and it still doesn't make any more sense today. Beautiful. Thank you. Christina, anything on this one? Um, just kind of a, I feel like this moment here in particular, um, Amber does try to turn up the charm a little, you know, she, she sees that Savannah is pushing back. She sees that, oh, my little metaphor didn't go so well. So she's doing a lot more of the smiling and the kind of leaning in and saying, you know, I mean, this is just so silly, right? You know, I, I'm just going to charm you now because I don't have a good answer for this question. She knows she doesn't have a good answer for this question. And then the other part is the... Um, you know, I think this trial became a, a big thing of questioning my credibility. And I mean, you guys, it, I, I don't think she gets it. She still doesn't get it. She still doesn't get it. I don't know, Rob, maybe you can explain it to her. Um, and that is the whole point of the trial. Like, and she just wants to like, I just don't understand why, why they were picking on me. You know, it, it's that I'm going to play the victim again. And I'm going to just try to be charming and I'm going to try to pull you in. I'm going to try to distract you from the question that you just asked me. <laughs> what question? <laughs> by the time, like by the time she gets to the end of that, right? Are you going, what was the original question? Because there could be an edit there, but you know, we start with the pledge donate thing. Do you think you got caught in a lie? And do you think that, you know, impacted the jury's opinion of you? And then she just ends with, you know, the whole trial was just about them being mean to me. That wasn't the answer to the question. Yep. Because she doesn't have a good answer to that question. So. And you know, you know what else? What is the level of intelligence you would have to assume the jury has to think that that technique is going to be effective to say pledge and donate are identical? And that's what I believe. And then again. Let's go back to the worldview. What level of intelligence does the average American watching this interview need to have in your mind to think they're going to believe the house metaphor? Apparently, none of them must be house owners. <laughs> so I think uh, I think that's a big deal of just it showing if I believe this technique will be effective, that's also me assuming something about you as a person mm -hmm. and about the, the people watching. Uh, yeah, and totally agreed. And 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 uh, yeah, it, and she does that a lot, Chase, doesn't she? Where she says things where it's like she is not putting yourself in the shoes of the audience mm -hmm. to be like, yeah, you can't be too smart to believe this. Um, to Christina's point, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, and I fully agree. We People tell us what their priorities are with which part of the conversation they focus on. If you accuse me of something that I didn't do, and then inadvertently the subject changed just a little, I would go back to that original point and try to drive it home and be like, no, I need you to understand this. She takes the opportunity to switch topics with welcome arms. And this is something that I use in poker. I use this in games of deception, like Among Us, or uh, I play Werewolf a lot. These are like games of deception. And uh, if usually someone who's stressed in these games, because a lot of what we do, people misinterpret, a lot of what we do, because the stakes of these games aren't very high, a lot of what we do doesn't apply, but this does. When someone's stressed because they're bluffing, if you introduce a new element, a new topic of conversation, you talk about what you did earlier that day, what you had for breakfast, someone who's stressed will embrace that topic change because this stress is eating them up. So be like, oh, tell me about that. And, then, and they'll, they'll just jump on that opportunity to change the subject because it takes the heat off the game. Whereas someone yeah. who's innocent or will stick more to the game and be like, oh, let's get on with it. Come on. So, so I love what you said, Christina, and I fully agree. Um, are we all good on that one? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do one more and then let's take a couple of super chats or maybe we'll just do all the clips, then super chats. I'm seeing a lot of people in the chats talk about the, the difference in editing. We're absolutely going to talk about that. But let's yeah. move on. Uh, this next one is mostly for Rob. It does not have the intention of getting Rob worked up necessarily, but uh, legally, I would love to know the answer to this. So, mm -hmm. so Rob, it's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of you. Is there one piece of evidence that you wish the jury had seen, that you could point to. You say, ah, oh, this would have made the difference. Yeah. What is it? There's a, a binder worth of years of notes 
dating back to 2011 from the very beginning of my relationship that were taken by my doctor, who I was reporting the abuse to. That doctor was Amber's therapist at the time. I am talking about what's happening to me in real time when she was taking contemporaneous notes of what was happening. Amber's lawyers also showed us text messages that were excluded from trial, like this one she sent to another therapist saying, Johnny did a number on me. I thought I had a concussion. And this text message she says she sent to her father after that disputed incident on the plane. Take it away, Rob. I just heard something I hadn't heard before. And um, Amber Heard watches a lot of the criticism about her. And not just from, from her, her reaction, but she watches and she listens intently to the criticism about her and she actually does some research on it. The key words that she focuses on here. So I've given the synopsis of the doctor's notes. One, her timeline sucks. Uh, if the yes. doctor's taking notes from 2011, they started dating, I think, end of 2011, early 2012. Is that right, Christina? Uh, ish, Depending ish. on which version of Amber's story you want to go with. Exactly. Amber first testifies that essentially uh, that first year of their relationship was fantastic mm -hmm. um, and there was nothing ever there. So mm -hmm. in this, she refers to there's a binder of notes. One, the allusion to a binder. Therapists don't take notes in binders. They take notes on notepads and they stack them up and they have a notepad drawer that they have. Um, a binder is an allusion to this is a document that I intend to use as an exhibit. Attorneys put notes in binders to display to juries, not therapists. So that's your first hint that she's talking about the litigation process. Second hint, she refers to the notes being taken by her doctor. Now, this is now going to not just the medical records. So she's not referring to them as medical records. She's talking to those notes now. She's now changed what they are to the public perception. She was referring to these same things as medical records. They are now notes and they are now taken by her doctor, a person of authority, going back to what Chase was saying earlier and what Spidey and Christina have all echoed. So this person of authority, and then what she does is she actually illustrates the business records exception to hearsay with one exception here. So she says, taken by her notes, taken by the doctor, um, of me talking to what happened um, and they were contemporaneously taken. So you have now laid out the business records exception with one freaking caveat. The statements that the doctor was taken down were your statements. Hearsay itself is an out-of-court statement that you're intending to introduce for the purpose or for the, the substance of what you're saying. So if I go out and say the sky is blue, Someone can't then go and say, Rob said the sky is blue if they're trying to prove on that day that it was a clear, sunny day. They can't say Rob said this to prove that. The exception for business records is that a doctor's note taken by a doctor contemporaneously in that moment because they're a business and because they take these notes as a part of their business is subject to an exception. So that doctor's statement can come in. But you have to have an exception to hearsay for every level of hearsay. The secondary level of hearsay is Amber Heard's own statements. And that doesn't come in because there's no exception to that. It's a self-bolstering statement. Uh, a sentence doesn't get more powerful the more times you say it. If I text Spidey and said, I had a bad day, and then I go out and say, look, I had a bad day, and look, I text Spidey and said I had a bad day, it doesn't make it that much more impactful. However, the reason that is excluded is that to a jury, it suggests that because it was in a doctor's note, it suggests that the statement should be given more importance than it, than it actually is owed. So she's listening. She tailored her response to meet an evidentiary burden that she still falls short of. Mm -hmm. But And Rob, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to that. First of all, that, was, that blew my freaking mind. What you just said about binders and, and notepads, freaking amazing. But I'm going to add to that. Everything you just said was explained to Amber by Elaine, I guarantee it. Because contemporaneous is Elaine's mm -hmm. word. And I know it's it's your word as well. It's a word you understand. It's not a word Amber knows. It's not her word. Somebody sat her down and explained to her exactly what you just explained, the exact way that you explained it, and said, here's the way you need to say this in order for it legally to stand. And that's exactly what she did. She was coached and she used the word contemporaneous, which isn't hers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I have something for this here, and this is going to lead into probably me asking Rob 
uh, just by default because uh, so in my notes, I have uh, written here as, as I was watching this uh, today, I have mandated reporting. So I think this is in California. I'm yes. just imagining that it is. Most states, uh, I know this from going to college for psychology, and most states are mandated to report domestic abuse. And I think any health practitioner employed in a health facility, a clinic, physician's office, psychiatrist's office, whatever, has a mandated duty to report. And I think anybody can say anything they want to a therapist. And I think in this instance, we either have some kind of serious issue or the information the therapist receives was not about her being abused or the therapist didn't believe her and didn't feel the need to do mandated reporting. But if these records were submitted and there was no mandated reporting, they could be ruining this therapist's life. So I would, I'd be curious to hear from Rob what you think. So on the mandatory reporting thing, um, that exists predominantly in the context of children. Uh, when a teacher, a therapist, a doctor sees physical evidence of an injury, they must report it. With regard to therapists, you're walking a very fine line and states differ by this one. They differ, they differ by state because the purpose of therapy is to allow that person to say something and to form a relationship with your client that is at its foundation, a relationship of trust. And if that therapist goes outside of that trust and reports something, then any progress being made by therapy is out the freaking window. This is why therapists are not supposed to testify to what they believe the cause of certain things are or what they believe, um, if they believe what their client is saying is true or not, because you can't undermine that foundation of trust that is essential for the therapy to exist. In this particular case, whether she's mandatory reporting or not, if the notes had something in there, something beyond just Amber's statement that said, Amber appeared today with a bruise or Amber appeared today to me to have these things. Those notes would have come in without a question. The yeah. only purpose the notes were being offered was because the notes themselves, the only reason they, let me, let me caveat that, the only reason they could have been offered on this understanding is that the sole purpose of the notes were to get them introduced because the therapist was writing down the words that Amber told her. That is it. If there were any other observations, then you redact out the words and you submit the notes. But the words that they told her, that's the sole purpose of those notes, which is why they were kicked. Which is, is you think that's also why they didn't call the therapist in as a witness? I, I don't, I think they couldn't. Well, that goes back to the ethical obligations on a therapist where you can't really testify to whether you believe your client is true or not or saying a truthful thing because you would have to go outside of that relationship to prove or verify that. Um, and if she still is engaged with this therapist, then uh, that creates a big problem. I think secondarily, the therapist, you don't want to bring the therapist in because if there's notes or indications from the therapist that she might have histrionic personality disorder or any one of these things, That's now you've got a secondary source reporting it. Something mm. was going on. And and I do know in California, if this is where this was taking place, there, there is a mandated reporting for mental health providers to report domestic abuse. Thank and you, Chase. Can I, I can elaborate as well on that text message. So we actually have two doctors here. The, the first set of notes, I, I, won't, I won't say names just in case we don't want to cause trouble, but the first set of notes are for a therapist she says she, see, she was seeing in 2011 to sometime possibly 2013. The text message, that actually came into the UK. So I've seen it. I've seen the entire exchange. And that doctor is an MD. He is a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. Thank you. Um, I always get them a little confused. So he has an MD as well. And she is texting this person, implying that she was just assaulted and has a concussion. And he didn't report. And in, in truth, he didn't reply until sometime the next day, I believe, and says, you know, you can come in today. Come in today at like 11 or something. And she did. According to her, she went. And so this is after the December 
incident where December she claimed, 15th, yeah. yeah, she claims she has a broken nose, a split lip, two black eyes. So she goes to see this MD. And, uh, you know, as, as Rob just said, if there was a notation that, you know, she shows up, oh, she's got a broken nose, black eyes, busted lip. Um, you, you would assume if she walked in the door looking like that, and she says, you know, this is what he did to me last night. How, how can that man justify not immediately reporting? I, I have to agree. There's, there's got to be something here. There's got to be a reason that none of these professionals, you know, they also, during the Dateline episode, they run the clip of um, nurse Aaron, uh, who, again, the same night, the same incident, she sees her about 24 hours later. Now she only sees the bleeding lip. Doesn't report. Fastest healing nose in the world. Yeah. She's like Wolverine. So my, my, you know, my speculation here is that Amber is telling people that she has injuries that no one sees, right? So she, the nurse's notes are, she, she examined her head and saw no bruises, no contusions, right? So if Amber's saying, oh, you know, I, I was hit, I was hit in the head, I was hit repeatedly, and a medical professional is looking at her and doesn't see this, you have to conclude this person is either just lying, delusional, or exaggerating severely. And if, you know, these are people that have been working with her for some time, so you would kind of have to guess maybe this has happened before maybe it happens often enough that every time amber says you know oh i have a broken nose no you don't moving on yeah i'd be curious to know if any of her records ever mentioned a, a diagnosis of munchausen syndrome i would as well <laughs> chase do you want to explain that for people who so Munchausen syndrome is classified as a factitious disorder, and it's typically if somebody is faking an illness, but not faking it for legal purposes. So faking it for legal purposes or to get some kind of benefit, that's kind of the on the side of malingering, but trying to convince people that you're sick and, and get attention from it or get some kind of special reward from it and from social uh, for social reasons is typically more on the side of Munchausen's. And if parents are deliberately uh, poisoning their kids or giving them tiny bits of poison to keep a, their children sick, this is another version of this called Munchausen's by proxy, which yep. is and, the most disgusting thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And it very much relates to, we were talking about Chase's book earlier. I actually had it here for a reason. This is Chase's book, by the way, everyone, six minute x-ray. I'll leave a link in the description after the live is, is done where you guys can, can get this. Uh, it's phenomenal. It's the best profiling book in the world. Yeah, and uh, Chase, I'm going to give away a little bit of the a little bit of the content in there, but that, I've given myself permission to do that. What are you holding? This at? is uh, this was my textbook for a little while. This is clinical At assessment of malingering and deception, and this book here uh, really goes into that stuff. And one of the biggest indicators in here that of anything is did they attempt to hide a portion of their behavior? Mm. And we're absolutely seeing that here. So if somebody says, I have a mental illness. I did not mean to sexually assault all those people. Really? Why have you been hiding your behavior if it's a result of you, you have no capacity to control yourself? Why have you been hiding it? So like that's a big deal, especially when we're assessing people faking things, not just a disorder. All right. Yeah, but Chase, uh, great. But I want to talk about something else from this book. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay. So I'm going to give away a little bit of your a little bit of your material here, but it, it's incredible. So Chase has uh, identified six behavioral needs that uh, people have, and I'm not going to talk about what all six are because it's such an important chapter in this book. And this allows you to know what someone's priority is behaviorally speaking. It's not a diagnosis. It's something we see in. Uh, it's not a. This isn't like um, in a magazine like the Zodiac or anything like that. This is like. In not personality, but behavior, how they behave and what it, that indicates priorities, six needs that people have. And Chase, all this conversation is reminding me of a major, major one. And I think you know which one that 
Amber has always, even on the stand, she says specific sentences that serve to get her, to get this need fulfilled. And I think this happened. I think the thing is she's done this her whole life and people have given into that. But I think now people aren't anymore and it's driving her nuts. And that is the need for pity, which Chase yeah. talks about a lot. And there are people out there who are pity seekers. And we see this quite a bit in interrogation where this behavior will come out where the, the person's reflex is if I can act like a victim to get pity, and I'm not specifically talking about Amber now, I'm talking about other interrogations that I've studied, where if I can get pity from people, they'll feel bad for me, they'll go easier on me. Well, on the stand, Amber will say a lot of things. And in this interview, she'll say a lot of things that aim, that seek to get that pity. Yeah. And it's very rare that you see uh, the two needs that Amber has are significance and pity. And those are almost never together. So it's a yeah. very rare case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because typically people who are looking for significance understand that pity won't get you there. But Chase, you'll often see it in high society, uh, people who have been catered to their entire lives. Because that, that sort of pity, that woe is me vibe will have gotten them that significance. But but it won't work really out of that demographic as often. So it's impractical. You'll also see Very it a lot in teenage girls. <laughs> Which yeah, I, I, I know you guys probably didn't have as much experience with as me. So just throwing no, that out that's, there. That's great. I have a 14 year old girl. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, not all, I'm not all. I'm just gonna say. Uh, let's move along. We'll keep the we'll keep the super chats because Chase does have to go. Uh, he you know he's got Chase's schedule gives me heartburn when he shows it to me. So he's, yeah, it's it, it's harsh. But uh, I'm so thankful. By the way, everyone, if you're watching, I'm so thankful for all three guests being here. Please yeah. hit that like button because that brings that tells the gods of YouTube that this video is worthy of showing other people, and then more people can come in and see these three amazing people and go follow them as well. And we're just one big family. So please hit that like button. It takes a second. It's right there. If you haven't yet, just take a second right now. Hit that like button. We'll wait. Okay, we'll I think wait. you're supposed to say smash that like button. Smash oh, that like button. I've been um, on YouTube for two months and I already hate the YouTube language. <laughs> uh, yeah. Smash that like button. I fail at it. So don't worry, Rob. You're not the only one. I, I forget <laughs> to say like things, subscribe, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. It's the day of the verdict. Oh dear. You come into the courtroom. Were you feeling confident? <sighs> That's a great question. I wish I could say yes to that. I want to say yes to you, but it would it wouldn't be true. So in my notes for this clip, all my clips have like behavior notes. For this one, my note only said, ask Christina what the hell that was. <laughs> because I feel like we just witnessed a soap opera scene. And, and besides the fact that she says four or five things to buy time to get to the actual answer, because basically the answer is no. But that is the longest no in history. And Christina, I need to know what we just witnessed. Yeah, I mean, the short answer is bad, bad, bad acting. Um and I have to say, I think she had this question ahead of time. I, it, th and this is an easy question. You know, this is just, okay, how'd you feel waiting for the verdict? And yeah, it's a yes or no. And Amber is trying to, again, just, you know, oh, milk the most out of this. And so she's acting like this very predictable, very simple question, just hit her like a freight train, knocked her back, took the breath right out of her. <gasps> That's a great question, Savannah. Give me a minute while I recover so I can answer it. Just answer the question, girl. And yeah, I wrote it down. You know, I wish I could say yes, because the answer is yes. I want to say yes to you because the answer is yes. But that wouldn't be true. So the answer is no. What? And... Even if I wanted to say this in the way that she said it, which no human being should, I wish I could say yes, but that would be a lie. She seems to be avoiding the word lie. She, she says, but that wouldn't be true. 
Ooh. So that would be a lie. Amber doesn't want to say the word lie. <laughs> and wow. again, she didn't have to say any of that. She could have just said, yeah, no. Mm. And, and also this, 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 this bad acting, this breath, this like it, like the, I guess she's trying to, to show that this verdict had an impact. Mm. But what's missing here is if, if the answer is yes, then, you know, yeah, yeah, I was confident. I thought we had a good case. I, I thought the law was on my side, something like that. If the answer is no, and, you know, she's saying I was sitting there and the verdict was, was you know, I was nervous. I was anxious. I was scared. You know, this is my life. None of that translates here. She's again, she's smiling. That's a little weird. Instead of saying, no, I was, you know, I was very nervous. I was very anxious. There's even the soap opera voice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, and I don't it's know like where this the, comes from. The scene where, where it goes, Janine, I know you loved her. Yes. Oh God. Yes. It's just us. Yes. I'm it, I'm a little surprised that she didn't go, you know. It was the most difficult day of my life. Like with a smile. Yeah, well, with a well, the, smile. The um, one caveat, the one caveat to your example, which is freaking perfect. When you did the deep breath, you were still facing us. You did the deep breath and we could watch your face and see what was happening and what emotion you were portraying. When she does it, what emotion do I want to exhibit in this moment? Present. Yes. And it's like, it's this, it's this, I am a peacock. Here I am in this moment. <laughs> and the thing is when she does, oh, peacock. I didn't realize I did that. NBC. Cool. Um, when she does this. The, when Savannah asked that question, the thing I've said every single time that I've been almost screaming when she goes, that's a good question. And I keep yelling in the back of my head. Yeah, that's why I fucking asked it. Like, <laughs> like, answer it. It's not hard. Like, answer it. And she just, blah, 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 blah. I think Sorry. that's a good question is her. She, again, I think she knew this question was coming. Yeah. But she's trying to act as though she didn't. Before, uh, I don't know if Chase had anything to add behavioral speaking, but I, I, I think this is such a beautiful and it didn't dawn on me till right now that this was such a beautiful way to follow the last clip because in the last clip, Chase, and this is a huge lesson in, in sort of reading people and profiling, um, Chase in the last video said that Amber seeks two things, significance and pity. And I would 100% agree. I think everything about her being suggests those two things. So let's look at the question here. Were you feeling confident? Here's why she struggled with this answer and had to have this wishy-washy thing, I, I believe, behaviorally speaking. Were you feeling confident? If she says yes, that does not play into her need for pity. Yes. If she says no, that does not play into her need for significance. Isn't that crazy, Chase? Right. Right. That's awesome. Isn't that crazy? Because to yeah. say... No, I wasn't confident takes away from her significance. Mm -hmm. Say, yes, I was confident takes away from her pity. So we are seeing the struggle because Chase said significance and pity is a weird mix. You, he said that before we got to this clip and you just witnessed why. Because in certain situations, they pull you in different directions. And that's what we're seeing here behaviorally. Yeah. And I've got a dip, sadly, in just a couple of minutes. But I wanted to see if I could drop a quick little master class on all that she did wrong and how you can learn from it if you're watching the video right now. Yes, please do. So people talk a lot about frames. Like, how do I get somebody to adopt my frame? What do I do if someone's challenging my frame? How do I change the way someone sees the world, basically? That's what she's trying to do. And when we want to persuade someone, we have to either a have a bigger frame than theirs more powerful frame than theirs or b we smash theirs we just do those two things but i want you to think of a frame in, in having four corners and those four corners are expectation perception beliefs and facts they have to go in order 
If I want to change your beliefs, I have to start with your perception of what's going or expectation and then modify your perception of, of the environment. Then I can start targeting your beliefs. If I want to modify your facts, like literally what you think is factual about the world, I have to modify your expectations, your perceptions, and your beliefs in that order. She skipped the line, which you cannot do. And she goes straight into changing beliefs and vacillates between beliefs and perceptions. So we have, we're able to predict all of her future behavior. Were we able to predict how Johnny was going to act on the stand? No. All of us were watching him talk and just admit all of this stuff openly. We're all going, holy crap. I can't believe it. So he started with expectation, which led to us changing our percep perception. We continued to watch and saw him being more and more and more, continuing to reveal this stuff, modified our beliefs, and changed the way that we view the facts of the situation. So if you want to see the world differently, your beliefs have to change first. If I need to modify your beliefs, I have to change your perceptions. To modify your perceptions, I have to subvert or change your expectations, which limits your ability to predict behaviors and make judgments early on. That's what the expectations are. Your ability to predict what's going to happen and make a judgment about this scenario or the situation. So one more time, expectation, perception, belief, and facts in that order. And that's what a frame is, according to me. Anyway, my opinion. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. And and often you're right. She even, it's not just beliefs, it's even facts. Like she says things that are factually yeah. not true. And because everything else isn't in place, we go, no. <laughs> She's jumping mm -hmm. the line. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I if that doesn't deserve everyone <laughs> to stop what they're doing and go follow Chase on his channel and the behavior panel, I don't even I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> And, and smash that like button, guys. Smash it. Actually, don't stop what you're doing because what you're doing right now is watching the screen. So immediately when we're <laughs> yeah. done, the more, wait, the more, wait, not yet. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. Just, the number just drops to zero. I'm like, damn. Oh. Um, Chase, on that note, I wish you a very uh, happy Father's Day. Um, it, yeah. You know, happy I, I Father's Day. You enjoy your, your children's company today. Congratulations on the engagement one more time. We are so Thank thankful you. for your presence here. Your wisdom is incredible um always learning it's amazing how i'm just, I, like you think you've you've got it all and then he talks and you go no, 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 that's you <laughs> Grace, thanks so Good much man. i love great you day. guys great to meet uh, meet both of you i love you out there at home we'll see you later take care thanks Trey. see you get up the youtube thing i i i love it yeah he's uh he's oh he's i'm a gonna need a moment no, I'm kidding. See, we're, still, <laughs> you see, we're still like pretend like we still like matter a little. Christina's okay. like, oh, like oh, is that, oh, is that the time? Is that the time? Nope. Okay, here we go. Thanks, Rob. There's no polite way to say it. The jury looked at the evidence you presented. They listened to your testimony and they did not believe you. They thought you were lying. How could I'll put it this way? How could they? make a judgment how could they not come to that conclusion they had sat in that in those seats and heard th over three weeks of non-stop relentless testimony from paid employees and towards the end of the trial randos <laughs> as i say so you don't blame the jury i don't blame them it wasn't i i don't blame them i actually understand he's a beloved character and people feel they know him. He's a fantastic actor. I have uh, two quick notes on this. One is when she laughed at her own Rando's comment, the speed in which she went back to the facial expression before the laughter was unnaturally fast. Usually we're saying something, we say something funny, we laugh a little, that smile stays for a little as we go back. She laughed and then she went right back to that. Like it was a very quick shift. For me, emotions don't usually shift like that. Um, I think she, I think she's, she's pleased with herself with that randos thing. Like what, a, mm -hmm. as, as I call them, like what, a, what, why are you proud of that? Um, the second thing, I don't get her point. It's like, she's going to make a point, but never gets there. Cause she goes, how could they not? They sat there and listened to three weeks um, of testimony from paid employees, blah, 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 blah. And she never quite gets to the point of how they made that decision. You know, like you would think she would end up by saying something like, you know, they, they heard testimony about 
you know, this and that, and then turn, turn out how that's relevant. But all she said, the only point she made was they sat there and listened to three weeks of testimony. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that every legal proceeding in the world? How does that explain why? You know what I mean? Like there's never quite that answer to like, yeah, I, I totally don't blame them for because this, because saying that they listened to three weeks of testimony, you just explained what a lawsuit is. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. What, what else do we have? Uh, I texted you um, when you sent us these clips. I texted a series of emojis and I was like, you mean the randos? And it was the smiling face. I gotcha. And then it was the like cringe with the mouth is all teeth. And then it was the looking seriously. And then it was the flat affect. Like <laughs> you, you can describe this, this act in emojis. Like you're going to like this, right? You don't like this. Oh, serious. Like it is just boom, 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 boom in a yeah. split second. It was wild. Yeah. I, I think maybe this is again, a, an attempt at that self deprecating humor, but she doesn't understand that she's not deprecating herself. She's insulting everyone else. It's like, I thought this was a clever joke. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And it fell flat. And I think, I, like, we don't see Savannah's face, but when she said randos, I bet Savannah's face went from this to, to this. Like, I don't think anything happened. She was like... Yeah. And so yeah. I'm going, oh, randos. Oh, that, that, I, I will say, I don't As think I she... Say. Yeah, I don't think she really has a good grasp of comedy or comedic timing. And I, 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 I've seen that a lot of times from her. She thinks she's making a joke, and it's just meh. But... The other, the other note I had, I did notice her blink rate went up. See, I'm learning things. Nice. Yeah, good catch. But can we go back to the beginning? You guys remember how I said the whole goal for her is to humanize herself, right? And then she says about Johnny, he's a beloved character and people feel like they know him. He's a fantastic actor. And then, you know, at some point she mentions Captain Jack Sparrow by name. She is literally taking his humanity away. Wow. Well, trying to make it her own, too. Yeah. He's not a human being. He's just an actor. He, you don't really know him. That's just a character. Love it. Wow. But she's not vindictive. I, I took note of that when she <laughs> called him. Yeah, she's not vindictive. Um, no, she's also, yeah. Can we also talk about? I didn't put this scene because I already said it, my piece about it in the last video, and, and I don't, I don't like it when she talks about being the, you know, I'm not a good victim, I'm not a perfect victim, and uh, um, to me, it was a, a big contradiction between her saying that and when she was on the stand and said, "I have never yes. wanted to be seen as a victim." Then why did you say, "I know I'm not a great victim. I know I'm not a perfect victim." Why did you use that word? Because that's the media talking point. Yeah, perfect she, victim. Her PR people saw, I think they might have been responsible for some of those op-eds calling her an imperfect victim. Imperfect victim. Imperfect victim. Imperfect borrowing, victim. Borrowing words. Yep. Imperfect she had victim. to steal it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. To, to anyone in news media, if you ever throw perfect victim in front of a headline again, I will do everything I can to take that article down. I never want to hear that again. Yeah. Rob is a hero. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I and I and I and I totally relate because he's seen, Rob has seen enough and worked with enough survivors to know that there's no such thing as a perfect victim. There's yep. no standard. There's no there's no uh, epitome. There's no there's nothing you're trying to be. You just are. Yeah. They you keep just, selling that narrative, and it's da yeah. that's the damaging narrative. Narrative, and they're the ones creating it. Yeah. And Amber just decided I'm going to piggyback on that. It's unbelievable how the, the thing that I would describe, like most survivors that I've worked with when I used to therapy, then one thing I would survive, the, the one word I would use to describe what they're doing is they're, they're just trying to survive. They're just trying to get, you know, they're just trying to get through it. And they're not concerned on how they appear or, or what, what's being shown. They're just trying to get through it. They just, and it's literally, they are not a perfect victim. They just are. Um, so yeah, I, 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 Rob, I hated that term as much as you did. And I didn't want to bring it up. It's just that the contradiction with- I know, I know. Staff. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a difference between me for comedy, trying to get Rob riled up with like silliness and stupidity and trying to actually emotionally 
um, affect him. I'm not trying to do that at all. I hope nobody ever thinks I am because that'd be really silly of me. No, and I, I I trust Spidey. Spidey knows. He knows. He knows, and he's. I call him a friend, and um, I don't have any problem with him doing that because honestly, when Spidey does that, it's oftentimes because it's something he wants to say too, and it's like I'm I'm happy to say it. So yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's move along. We have one clip left here, and then we have the big edit. Uh, let's take a look. Ooh. When I asked his lawyers, why do you think you won? The answer I got was because she never took responsibility for anything she did in the marriage. And as we're sitting here and I watched your cross-examination, there's an answer for everything. Do you feel you should have owned up to more of your own bad behavior that was revealed in court. I'm glad, actually, you asked me that because, you know, there is an answer for these things you say. I said this on the stand. Uh, my, you know, you hear my voice in those audio tapes. It's not the voice I, of me now. That's not who I am now. I did do and say horrible regrettable things throughout my relationship. Uh, I behaved in horrible, almost unrecognizable to myself ways. There's so much, I have so much regret. You're here. Oh, okay. There is uh, there's a lot of behavior stuff there. I think uh, Rob needed to take a little bit of a quick pause from that. Um, this is what- She has this, that effect. Yeah, this is what he does when he just needs a sec. And that's fine, I'll be back in a minute. Um, I just wanna talk behaviorally about this scene. And then, and then, Christina, you'll go, and then we'll hear from Rob. I love that you just called it a scene. <laughs> um, when she says, when Savannah says, "Never take responsibility," we see from Amber three things at the same time. We see that flutter as she kind of wiggles. We see this kind of wiggle mm -hmm. as she kind of readjusts. We call this postural shift, and this is her like sort of like. I feel like we don't see her hands, but I feel like she's kind of fixing her shirt. That wouldn't be inconsistent with what we're seeing in that upper body. Cause it's like, she's sort of, mm -hmm. I, I don't take accountability. That's like, so it's sort of like this defensive sort of like posturing, shifting, blinking. It's like I said before, like almost pre-aggression sort of like getting ready to deal with this confrontational statement because Savannah was confrontational. She was like every, you're deflecting everything here. Um, then really, really interesting thing. When she says, when Savannah's, uh, question continues says bad behavior we see from amber she smiles but just before that smile there's the micro expression for a second millisecond of disgust and i'm going to play it again because i want you to see it as she goes up to smile this is disgust this is a very pronounced disgust both sides of those crinkle on the way up she goes as she smiles we see a quick flash of disgust then she comes back down and it's continued disgust but more the eh, kind of disgust with the corner of the lips going down like this. So she goes, and then she goes with that neck tilt, which she does when she feels condescension on someone because neck tilt is comfortable, it's confident, but it also happens when we're trying to show confidence, like the rapper on the album cover, you know, that pose, like sort of like, I'm confident, come at me. So that's exactly what we saw there. The confrontation caused her to go disgust to, yeah, let's go. And I want you to see that again. I'm gonna play that again, uh, just cause I want you to see that, that progression. Wait, where's the, oh, here it is. How do I, oh. Some people might ask. Where the heck is it? Why? Sorry. Yeah, that's Rob, right. Rob, do your best. Do you feel you should have owned up to more of your own bad behavior, bad behavior that I'm, was revealed in court? I want to discuss. I'm glad, actually, you asked me that, that because. I'm glad, actually, that you asked me that. See, it's not like, it's not a genuine I'm glad I'm you know I'm glad we're talking about that. It goes discuss, discuss, had to, I'm glad. And then like with that sort of it she did this in her deposition too. I'm glad. I'm glad you asked me that. Yeah, yeah, but you're not. You're not glad she asked you that. I'm done. <laughs> she she, she like no, <laughs> she she uses the phrase um that that it actually is really illustrative when you break it down. Um my behavior was unrecognizable to myself yes that was too. such a self-aggrandizing statement it was so, such a self-aggrandizing statement because in that instance she puts herself up on a pedestal 
saying this is me and my expectation of who I am. And then it says, I was unrecognizable to myself. Well, she also doesn't say what she does that's unrecognizable to herself, but, but she sets herself as, the, as her own bar by saying that. She says, this is as high as you can get as a human, myself. And I was unrecognizable to that bar that I set. And you should have the same expectation of me is what she's trying to convey. It was, it was I hated that phrase. Never should have been said. Mm-hmm. It's also the other problem with it, Rob, I believe, is that she's taking accountability, but she's not. Correct. Because it's like, because she's being told you don't take accountability. She goes, oh, no, no. I, listen, I know I did things wrong. Accountability. But I, I didn't recognize myself. That's not me. So take, she take it right back. She's actually still not taking accountability. Yep. Christina, what you got? Yeah. So, I mean, this is the big question, right? She, the intent here was to humanize her. The, and part of humanizing is humility. It is that taking accountability. And I, I actually wonder if this question came from her PR people. You know, we've got to get to that point because a lot of people were saying, you know, on the stand, the implication she gives here is that I did do that on the stand. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You apologized for foul language a few times. That was it. And so this is the moment here. This is the whole purpose of this interview. Amber, you need to show remorse. You need to show humility. You need to show the world, hey, I'm not that mean lady that they tried to make me out to be. I'm not that person anymore. So I, I think she had this question ahead of time which at, makes the, the, you know, Savannah hasn't finished the question. Amber tries to jump in. I'm glad. I, and then there's the, mm-hmm. so she's saying the words, I'm glad you asked me that while holding back the, I really don't want you to ask me that. That's I think where that eh, disconnect is coming from. She's, she feels one thing has to say another. And then there's so many things there including, uh, let's see, where, where did I, oh, there is an answer for those things that you say. Again, more words that are absolutely unnecessary, just answer the question, mm-hmm. right? Just go ahead, answer the question then. But that's such a weird turn of phrase. There is an answer for those things that you say. That goes back to that. yeah, you have an answer for everything, Amber. That doesn't make it true. You know, it's... This- very odd, very odd. And um, the other thing I, I just want to point out is, you know, we saw those uh, previews and then this is the final Dateline episode. They cut an entire paragraph of her answer there. Yep. And it was and one of my I, favorite parts because she on? said, okay, well, this is what she continues after, after she says, I have so much regret. This is what else she said. I freely and openly and voluntarily talked about what I did. I talked about the horrible language. I talked about being pushed to the extent that I didn't even know the difference between right and wrong. That's a confession. mm, No, it's not. It's a deflection. It's a deflection. I was pushed to do those things. Pushed. but but, But to Christina's point... Right or I, wrong. I went to a point where I couldn't differentiate from right and wrong. Yep. So and, I, uh, I have a theory on this thing. one. That's a one-way trip. We we don't know when the return ticket was booked for. Like, are you <laughs> still in that place? Yeah. Well, she says she's not. I would That's say cool. all evidence to the contrary. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I have a theory on this response. And it's mm-hmm. it's that the PR team had something that was a PR statement that they wanted relayed. The whole um, the statement of uh, I didn't I didn't step up or meet my own expectations. Right. I, I didn't. I was. Uh, what did I write down? I forget the exact phrase, but she sets herself as the bar. She says, I disappointed myself, essentially. Um, that's a PR statement. That's what mm-hmm. politicians say when they come out and they do something stupid. And it's mm-hmm. a PR statement. But then you have all of the contradictory stuff of the putting it off. I was pushed to this point. So there's a battle. There's things that she wants to say personally. And then there's the PR statement that she is supposed to say genuinely. And she intermixes those. 
And she goes back and forth. That whole paragraph, Christina, that you just read, and thank you for doing that, by the way, is it just demonstrates that that fight that she's having with the message that she's supposed to convey and the genuine feeling that she has in the moment. And it, it just comes across in, the, in what she says. I think Other. it's the ego, you know? The speaking, ego. Of edits, speaking of edits between yeah. the Today Show and the uh, and the final one, I got bombarded with messages from this. And there are other YouTubers talking about what my position was on this and how in my analysis, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's on the channel. I post an analysis on Friday morning of just the Today Show snippets. And this live was going to be to cover the whole thing. Well, in that, I caught something she said. And it's a line I thought a lot about before after i really reflected upon it a lot of you had some great things to say and they cut it out they cut out just those words that i talked about so i want to show you now the original and the edited version that aired on dateline and, and all the theories that that why this happened what we're paying attention to is the words the resources that you or i have which appears in the first today show snippet but was cut out like butter masterfully edited of the Dateline version to the point where if, you know, even to someone who knows editing, it's smooth. It's really smooth. So let me just find it. Here it is. Listen. You're in an abusive dynamic psychologically, emotionally, and physically. You don't have the resources that, say, you or I do with the luxury of saying, hey, this is black and white because it's anything but when you're living in it. But when you're yeah, in no. an abusive dynamic, psychologically, emotionally, and physically, you don't have the luxury of saying, hey, this is black and white, because it's anything but when you're living in it. He says. So they just cut that out like butter. And it went from when you're in an abusive relationship, psychologically, emotionally, physically, um, you, and then it just cut to, you don't have the luxury of saying this is black or white, as opposed to you don't have the resources you, you and I do. Now, let's look at that statement. So initially, my, my, my point was this, and I still stand by it. It it's, doesn't make sense for us to create a demographic that we're part of and then talk like we're not part of that demographic. And it's not that she said, and. Like, you know, if, you have, if you've been in a relationship like this and you don't have the resources you and I do, is different than saying you've been in a relationship like this when you're in a relationship like this, you don't have the resources that you and I do when you're in that position. So it's like me saying, when you're a YouTuber and uh, you, know, you, you, buy, you buy video equipment and you learn how to edit and you learn how to live stream, you understand more about videography than you and I would. That doesn't make any sense. I'm on YouTube. I wouldn't exclude myself that if I feel like I'm a YouTuber. So the fact that she would create this demographic and exclude herself linguistically doesn't make any sense. So I thought about it and I said, what does she mean by the, the resources? Well, some people said it might be like, you know, money, but that doesn't make any sense because what, how would money play into seeing things as black or white? It's not like people who have more money see things as black or white more effectively than people with less money. That doesn't make any sense. What I think she meant was, when you're in that moment, when you're in that abusive situation, you don't have the luxury that we have right now to sit here and analyze and look at it case by case and see how bad it is. You're just reactive in that moment. I think she just expressed it really poorly and let it slip that when you're in that situation, you don't have the resources you and I have. And it sounded like she's not part of that demographic. I think what happened is her PR team looked at that. I have no idea if my video had anything to play into that, but I think her PR team looked at that and saw the same thing I saw and said, it's weird. She's talking about abuse victims or abuse survivors as being separate from her. And that's weird. We need to cut that out. And by the way, Rob, you'll probably confirm this. Her PR team has a contract with NBC that they have to sign off on the final edit. Oh, I didn't know that they, they had the final edit. It has to be. It, it has they to be. never no. allow it. Generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, this is this is one of the things, and this is why people are speculating why she might have made up to eight million dollars for this interview. Is that NBC had final final say? Once she sat down, those words became NBC's, and I have a different opinion as to as to that edit. I think it was when she implied that you or I to Savannah, and that in, implicates that that's that suggests that Savannah 
might in some fashion be in the class of Amber Heard at this discussion or in this setting. And Savannah, who works for NBC, do you know what I mean? There's a way that you can see that and say, look, she just pointed at Savannah and said, you and I have this magic privilege. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. I don't think it would be worthy of putting any time into editing that out because it's just it's just Amber saying it's like, yeah. Listen, there's a lot of good theories on this. Um, so Rob, when I said that her her PR team, I'm not confirming that I know that. I'm just saying if it was my PR team or the PR team, mm-hmm. almost any celebrity going on an interview like this, the PR team would say we need to we need to confirm anything that gets aired. I don't. You, maybe you're right. Maybe NBC said no. We'll pay you a ton of money for us to get the final say. But it's possible that our lawyers went in there and redlined certain things and said, nope, that's got to go. So I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Um, could be the other one. I find it very interesting that the, the long form clips that were on the Today Show absolutely look w- a, a little harsher for Amber. The Dateline episode, when it's all put together with the narrative, does frame her in a much more positive light. So these are two different shows, same company. So I I have a question for you, Rob. What is NBC's liability here? Because they are knowingly putting her on TV. There's nothing. Nope. That's it. These are Amber's words. That's why, that's why in look, if you're looking, so, um, so they're not republishing. No, 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 YouTube channel fair and balanced. Um, she does a lot of breakdown on this stuff in particular, because she was a former media anchor and I was on her channel, uh, on Friday, walking through as this was being aired live. I watched live. part. I didn't finish. So, so yeah. um, my apologies because you probably answered my question. <laughs> it, it, this is this is not on NBC. NBC is allowing her to speak, but these are her words. Mm-hmm. They are her words. This is not Washington Post taking these words and then republishing them. This is just NBC saying, "Hey, um, this is a platform. You go and speak." Which is why I think there's a lot of editorial discretion here because anything that Amber Heard says that would imply that NBC has jumped on and said the same thing mm. might might suggest or or promote liability on NBC's part. If I'm NBC's attorney, I'm sitting here going, "No, no, 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 Savannah, you don't say, don't anything that where Savannah says, I agree with you here or something like that. Cut that out." So, yeah. I also yeah. have my doubts about the 8 million. Everybody's saying it. That's a lot of money for this show. Um, it is. That's unless, a lot. Unless it is a hundred percent exclusive. If it's a hundred percent exclusive and you don't hear from Amber Heard at all, Ever any again? More comments. I mean, I don't know. Cause look how much, look how much traction this has gotten all over the place. Well, now the so- nice thing is it's not traction on NBC. If it's an exclusive <laughs> in that regard, that's worth eight. 8 million, you know, okay. So that means that she can never speak of it again because if she does, NBC can sue her? Yeah, they would want the rights to that. They filed a copyright claim, said we had copyrights to all these statements. This doesn't go down well for her, in my opinion. Yeah. Knowing knowing Amber, she probably wants a do-over already. She wants a do-over of her do-over. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, always, always has to go back and re- re Yeah, so the temptation is going to be there to do it again, maybe not right away. She's going to have to find the right outlet. But if, if the claim is that, you know, this contract with NBC is, this is it, you can't do this again. I mean, I'd love to see her get sued for, you know, another contract violation because she's done that before, but. um, (laughs) Talk about a swing and a miss. If this was your one chance to get out there and and actually say what you wanted to say. Yeah. Wow. Here's another theory from me. Might be a little out there. I'd love to see what you two think. So, Christina, I totally agree with what you said in that the Today Show snippets seemed to be a lot more grilling her. Mm-hmm. Not a lot more. Quite a, quite a bit more. They showed these things where it looked like she was getting a little pinned. And uh, and the final version seemed a little softer on her in edit. So my initial assumption was I think her PR term, her lawyers had to redline a lot of it and say, nope, get that out. We don't want that. That's a bad look. I think there was some of that. I, I do maintain that. I also think this. If they showed those little snippets on the Today Show as being pro Amber or defending Amber, a lot of the Depp fans who watched it would be like, "We're not watching this thing," right? And they they would throw it up. We're not watching this thing. It's mainstream media again trying to sh- push this narrative. Maybe it was an attempt or a way to get the Depp fans to go, "Oh, 
that's interesting. It looks like they're going to give her the, yeah. gr the old grill. We will watch it. And then they go watch it, and some edits have been made to make it a little softer. I still do think Savannah is still throwing those darts, and I, and I do like that, but I do agree with you that in editing, it seems like they've removed parts that are in favor of Amber Heard. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, that could go back to the whole we're trying to appear fair and balanced, nonsensical dance of drama. Um, so, you know, we're going to give you this preview that makes you think we're going to go harder on her. Right. Mm, we're going to get her. And then the dateline at uh, editorial. And it's essentially the editorial narrative that helps frame it in her favor, as well as cutting out these little bits that really aren't good for her. But even even the way they present the trial, when they try to make it seem like it's fair, I thought it was like, no, we're going to show you what's really bad for Johnny. And then we're going to kind of mm, easy peasy on the whole Amber, because I also think a big portion of the conversation about the audio recordings got cut out. Oh, yeah. And they cut every cutaway was a explanation as to the evidence that Amber wanted to present. Mm hmm. Yeah. Every cutaway. Yeah. And and they don't really mention the counter evidence. Nope. Um, yeah, there was a, that. It felt like the Dateline episode was for Amber. Mm -hmm. And the Today Show clips were for the Today Show. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, so, yeah. And I, you could be right, though, about tra track, try trying to attract both sides of the audience. Yeah. But on that note, I think the numbers were like three million. So well, I well, really well. hope they didn't pay her eight eight million dollars because there's no way that was worth it. Womp I mean, womp. Three million is a train wreck. That's yes. really really bad. The lowest, one of the lowest of their season. For Dateline. Yes. Oh my lord. Um, I sent that to Alita, and she goes, "I had more than that on my live streams." Yeah. You know. Well, I had I had more than that when I was on the Today Show. The numbers were like six or seven million on the first appearance, and then it Woo! reared later in the week. Yeah, and and so I'm. You beat Amber. Congrats. Listen, listen I don't hold on, hold on. Let's not say the sentence you beat Amber. I don't. Yeah, I was. I did, I want as I as Spidey's attorney. I wanted to clarify that no, he did not beat her. <laughs> in he the was, rating. He, in the rating. He exceeded okay. numbers that Amber Heard was able to attract to NBC. Lawyers. In the ratings. We say you beat them in the ratings. Okay. I know, I know, I know. Thank you, thank you to everyone who was here who joined us for this live stream. Um, it was the first one. It was a lot to deal with, as Rob astutely noticed. I hope we all had fun. There was some great analysis in here. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to uh, subscribe if you haven't. And once I get to you know fix the description, I didn't want to put everyone's links. So I want to ruin the surprise. But everyone's channels will be there. Please go follow them. Chase, Rob. Christina, thank you. Thank you so much. I, this would have been nowhere near as good as it was without your amazing insight. You're welcome back on the channel anytime. Literally, I appreciate it so much. Love thank it. Thank you. That was a blast. Thank you. Yeah, this was fun. Everyone, go enjoy your, your weekend. If, it, yeah. if you're in Europe or in Asia, it's too late. Go get some sleep. But otherwise, if you're here on, on this side of the world with us, it looks like a beautiful day out there. I hope you guys all have a wonderful one. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.